Hi guys, and welcome to our brand new campaign, 5e D&D, Heart of the Plains. Uh, before I introduce you to the lovely players here, I will first like to say thank you very much to Brepi for our new art. It is amazing. As you can see, it's scrolling by at the moment. She's really outdone herself this time. Uh, I'd also like to say thank you to uh, Wonders and Blunders, who have an amazing podcast you should definitely check out one of their players is here right now he's just to the side i think that way i hope that way i can't tell on the screen uh is it clear? look no nope, other way that way, <laughs> other way, other way. <laughs> i had to watch for the delay and be like he's, he's that, that way uh and yes it is it's it's uh asian he's, he plays as as mama lizard and you should definitely go check that out uh you can see all that information below in the in the panels we got uh twitter and youtube and Possibly Instagram, I can't remember. But go have a look, check us out, and uh, yeah. But with that, further ado. Oh yeah, merch. We have that now. Go check it out if you want to, or not. Up to Our you. Our very own agent has a special mug from there. Yes, and I know uh, Sarah. Re sorry, Shrogro really wants. I've said your name. Really wants to get a um. Docs. Docs. Swatted. Um, it's coming. <laughs> Let's not do that. Um. <laughs> Right, so anyways, uh, I'll say introducing you to players and stop memeing. Um, <laughs> starting from left, I believe, we have, uh, what do you like to be called there? Just Is just Reese acceptable? Uh, yeah, Reese is fine. Um, hi, I'm Reese. Uh, I am playing the lovable rogue assassin Felix O'Farra. Um, and when I'm not playing D, &D. i uh work on a channel called nerds of the west uh we're a youtube channel and a, and a and a twitch channel um we focus on playing board games mostly but we've started playing video games and doing uh some other stuff uh as well so if you, that interests you feel free to go check us out i believe you've been uh exploding demons into multicolored pixels on that so far Oh uh, yeah, we yeah I, uh, I I I do solo streams on Tuesday, and I just finished uh, Doom Eternal uh, for the second time, so that was lots of fun. So, <laughs> so go check go check them out. Yeah. Uh, next along, we have our returning Agent of One playing Dominic. Hi, I'm Agent, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm playing Dominic. I, I played in an earlier version of this campaign. Um, with, with a group of other players before I met Tig, who you'll meet in a moment. Uh, I also play here on Monday mornings in the Warhammer campaign. And I'm part of the Wonders and Blunders crew, which uh, is a podcast. We've been putting out episode 50 this week. Um, so we've been going for a year. It's our year celebration next week. Uh, so check us out if you're, if you're all into D&D and want some more. Okay. Uh... Next along, we have Tig, or Tig Ariel, played by Shrogrill. Tig! Hi, guys. I am Shrogrill. I will be playing Tig, who is back and is excited to have fun and meet everybody. And yeah, see what yes. happens. You're all <laughs> excited for this. <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> and lastly, we have a newcomer to the stream. I believe Reese was new as well, actually, but still, let's let's call one of us out for it. Rain, <laughs> newbie. Um, oh, I'm being bullied. <laughs> <laughs> I need an adult. I am an adult. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, upsetting. <clears throat> so we have we have Rain showing up now, uh, playing Valiste. Greetings. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm I'm Rain. Um, I also, and I'll, I'll give you my actual name because why not? Uh, I'm Josh Walker and I play in a, an, a different D&D um, &D podcast as well called uh, There Be Dragons. Uh, you can find us at tbdragonscast.com. Um, and uh, we've, we've recently released episode 13, so we're not quite as far along as Agent, but um, yeah. We're, we're having a bit of fun, and I play Skin Felspa, the, the half elf ranger in that one. Um, but in this campaign, this exciting new uh, thing, I'm going to be playing Valiste, uh, the the uh, bard and many other fucking things, um, who, with a heart of gold and a deadly fucking scythe. 
There you are. That's who I am. <laughs> and uh, there's been significant argument on what his actions should be, but this is the result, and Kyle's got to fucking deal with it. I do, and I am unhappy. <laughs> with it. It'll be fine. Uh one thing I'll ask now, which I should have asked for, uh, just any chance you get a little more light for us? Just a little bit dark when I look at the uh, the, tw- the stream. Uh, but while while you do that, close up. <laughs> while you about do about the only option, really. <laughs> let's have a bit of a recap. Uh, I know this is a bit of a weird thing to do in a session one, but there was a certain Dominic who was here last time. Uh, it was nine months ago we did this campaign. It was the very first campaign we did on this stream uh, where you had to assist uh, Vanny, I believe. Do you want to give us a rundown? Curse of the recap. Um, yeah, let me see if I can polish that into a very neat fitting ball. Um, so Vanny's quest was what happened nine months-ish ago. Um Stirring our, our lovely triad here in the in the chat as well, uh, and a couple of others, and uh, it took place in a kind of homebrew Greek world where there was a civil war going on uh, in the style of the Trojan War, and uh, through the course of it, we were totally the bad guys and <laughs> uh, murdered a lot of innocent people. I think we thought we were the good guys until like. Uh, pretty close to the end um we we sailed around we did a bunch of deeds for these guys uh we killed a couple of small demigods known as titans in this world um nova's going to correct me uh, as, I, as i fumble through the, the details of his lore and um at the end of it uh we basically we got like the soul of a titan to try and bring Athena back to the world, but she was gone. And uh, this power, this kind of Zeusian power uh, was put into Vanny, uh, who got destroyed by it. It was too much, too much power for one person to handle. And uh, a huge tidal wave wiped out the world that we were living in, the world conjoined with another plane he's gonna he's i'm, I'm just like looking at him and just being like how, how much am i butchering this uh, <laughs> a fair bit but it's all right i'll cover it uh, yeah i mean the i'm trying i'm trying to there the none of this happened there. nothing get the cliff nuts. none there of this no happened wall. there was no wall of water and there was no yeah big tidal wave uh combined uh, our plane with uh, another plane uh, like two material planes that were somewhat separate and uh for dominic dominic uh, spent a bunch of time wandering the world he uh met with vanny right before she died in fact killed vanny with an arrow uh and promised to take care of her children uh which is unfortunate because they are elves and he is humans um so here we are 500 years later and dominic is somehow still alive um yeah that's 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 the nutshell version of the previous campaign Yep, so uh, he was from a Grecian-style thing. Uh, Minoan, I believe, yeah? With all, the, Minoan, with, all yeah. The, with all the bull stuff that entails. Uh, you had managed to kill Zephyr, one of the gods of the wind. You then managed to find the uh, artifact which held the power of Zeus as his last-ditch effort to kill the Titans millennia ago. Uh, and and Vanny sort of like took that into her and decided that the only way to safely uh, get rid of this thing was to send it into the afterlife. So it got you to kill her while she stood there. Uh, y- y- yes, indeed, pew. Um, and with that sort of uh, godly essence gone, the the walls that held so that demiplane there collapsed. And, and um, with that collapse, yeah, the Titans did one last effort to, to kill the, the puny mortals that had stopped them acquiring this godly power and tidal waved the whole island away. Oh. Old continent more, more on it. Uh, and yeah, but but you was teleported out by Vanny in her in her death and was told to look after her children. 
So that was all that. Which I did. Which he did. <laughs> kind of. He also wandered around a lot bored. Um, but, you know, 500 years, the kids will get annoying. Um, so, yeah. So this is set 500 years in the future after that event. In that time, Tig was around then as well. She actually was back there and she managed to... Vanny had... Uh, managed to get them out of that demiplane, but she had reason to stay behind. Uh, it was her and her uh, Tig's wife, um, Nissa, was there. So Tig and Nissa were shunted out of this demiplane uh, with the assistance of some high-powered people, and Vanny stayed behind. Went through the adventures with Dominic, and now 500 years have passed. Dom and Tig have caught up a few times in that time, and they're all looking for a way to get out of this plane and into another to, to find their own reasons. Uh, their own answers, I should say. They have their own reasons. So let's just quickly go around once more and we'll go with, you know, why you are... Just just one sentence of uh, your class and what you're hoping to achieve. So, Tig? Uh, as Tig? Tig smash, Tig play, Tig barbarian. Uh, to go find Nissa in place and bring home. Yep, that covers it. Um, <laughs> Erudite. Yep, Josh. Uh, yeah, right. Well, uh, <clears throat> I've got a fucking. Uh, I, I, I'm a bit of a. I, I, I query things. I, I look for the why in things. So I'm a bard. I'm a bard with a bit of warlock, mainly because of this fucking scythe that I've got that talks to me and occasionally is irritating. Um, and uh, I got it for a goddess, and I'm trying to take it back to her because it's actually quite irritating. Okay. Okay. Uh, Reese. Uh, well, Felix, uh, Felix is, a, once again, a rogue assassin, and, uh, he's sort of traveling the world, trying to find, uh, trying to find a way to, uh, say goodbye to his father, uh, one last time. One last time? Did you not? Did you manage? Okay, never mind. We'll, we'll, we'll discover that during the campaign. I, I've got questions. <laughs> I mean, I have questions. I'm meant to be the DM here. Um, and lastly, Dominic. Well, uh, Dominic spent about 500 years wandering this earth. He's taking care of Annie's children, and uh, his job's done. He's got no more that he wants to really see on this plane. So, uh, I'm hoping to go into the afterlife to break this curse on me. Okay. Right. So, you guys had a small uh, adventure on the way here. Um, while Valiste managed to make his own way here, quietly. Not, not disturbing anyone. <laughs> uh, the rest, not so much. Uh, Dominic... Felix and Tig all managed to have a bit of trouble here. Uh, they they might have angered a dragon, and and uh, did you I guys remember that going a lot differently. <laughs> Do you want to give us a recap there, Reese? <laughs> no, no, I'm fine. You... <laughs> <laughs> all, all that matters is that we're here. <laughs> so they. Uh, Dragons tend to not exist too much in this world. There was one that they knew of, that everyone knows of, and it's white. And when they found a big black dragon flying around, uh, it didn't bode well. They managed to survive the encounter. I believe they managed to put it down, actually, um, before being found by the wood elves that lived nearby and taken to their home. You were uh, taken to the Queen's Glade, where you were told if you was to wait a few days, they would assemble the court to... Uh, allow you to put forward a case to uh, make your way out of this plane as they have a stable portal between this plane and the Feywild, the first world, the realm of the fairies. And they are just sort of 
uh, congregating at the moment. So you have a couple of days to, to talk to each other, to explore the area and see what it's like. This place is known to have a very thin veil between this world and the Feywild. So things don't always behave here as they should. So now that you're all there, the first morning where you've all been there, you wake up. What would you guys like to do? I think Tig is probably going to sleep in past everybody at this point, just <laughs> drooling on the floor, probably. Have we are, are met we up in yet? like a camp or in a elven in like, hotel? <laughs> it's kind of like an elven resort at the edge of like okay. one of their most sacred places. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm chilling in the pool in my bodies. <laughs> just oh. there's a small like uh, wooden fence up uh, that is uh, guarded by by a bunch of wild elves all the way around it. They are generally uh, their their bodies covered in tattoos. They wear very little clothing, um, and the clothing they do seem to make. Uh, be wearing is made of, of leaves and vines and that sort of thing and they were carrying very very crude but effective looking spears these seem to be some sort of royal guard uh, given the different ad adornments around their necks rings, wrists, that sort of stuff and beyond that wall is just a gargantuan tree that just into the clouds so this resort is set up on the southern end of this glade where you've got a, a set of buildings that all sort of look onto the gate that would lead you into that area where the court is held. Dom would be up pretty early, I think. Um, you know, early to, early to bed, early to rise sort of thing. And uh, I think as the others get up, they would probably just find him in quiet contemplation, uh, meditating. In, in this serene place that he's found himself in. Okay. Is there food cooking at all? There will be food available at, uh, like, probably sunrise, midday, and sunset. Okay. Uh, if it's current, like, considering this is probably quite early in the morning, isn't it? Like, sunrise. Yeah, that's, like, they would prepare food at sunrise, and they'd leave it outside your door, and they just... If you don't take it, they'll come get it. Great. Okay. I reckon I'd probably wake up smelling that then. Just <laughs> get food. Okay. Start shoveling that in. The rest of you doing the same thing? Uh, yeah, I'll probably be eating, uh, doing some facial exercises, and, and maybe like just wandering around the resort, just looking where I am and what's going on. I would actually like to... Um, if I've gone and taken my food, I am probably going to peek out the door and see who else hasn't taken theirs. Uh, did anyone not take theirs out of you three? Uh, when did it arrive? Like, how, how, how big a window here are we being given? Probably a minute ago because I would have shoveled mine down. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, look, I, uh, yeah, no, I probably would have grabbed it. Uh, I might, I might be... I might be a little slow on the uptake. I'm only like, oh, great, there's food. I'll go and grab that in a minute. Um, so I'll tell you what. I'm going to roll a dice for it. Yeah, no, I'm fucking slow. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Great. That's, that's the answer to your question. Uh, I get there probably, I only get up when I hear someone else outside less than a minute later going, oh, fuck yeah, more food. I, I'd like to try and take any of the meats off of his plate and then go back. What is the somewhere? Um, so the there's there's three small bowls, right? One is some sort of uh, juice of, of some fruit you can't quite identify, especially since you're not really from around here. Um, there's a a plate of of just raw meat. Um, which seems to have been drained of blood. Uh, not like vampiric drained of blood, they've just like hung it till it stops sure, dripping. Sure. Uh, and then there'll be some cut fruit. Sure. So Tig is going to get that meat before I get there. Oh, yeah. Um, and I open the door to find uh, 
Tig, um, who I've never met, I don't believe. No, <laughs> um, <I'm> just, not. <laughs> just, just, okay, just so pounding you, this gigantic raw meat. <laughs> so you Bloodless. open the door. <laughs> How tall are you, Valiste? Just describe oh, yourself for everyone. They I'm, can see I'm you. A, I'm a, here. Yeah, they, they can see a picture of me. I'm I'm a, a bit of a, a a bit pasty, I suppose. Uh, I don't get enough vitamin D, certainly, uh, but I don't tan uh, at all. Um, I'm maybe maybe six foot, maybe probably five ten, somewhere like that. Uh, so Tig's Tig's quite a bit, like she's quite impo- I'm tit level, I imagine probably. I, I am I am a nipple height. Uh, yep, yep. And uh, um, I come out and I'm like, oh, break up. Oh, no, that's not breakfast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good so everyone can see Tig on the stream right now. And thank you very much for the raid, Game Cage. Appreciate that. Uh, Tig, if I remember correctly, you're about eight and a half feet tall. Do you want to describe yourself to everyone? <laughs> okay, so Tig is, yeah, about eight and a half feet tall. Very, very muscular, like Iron Man kind of woman. Um, she's got scraggly, messy blonde hair. Um, and there's just it looks like vines and root system are sort of growing with the hair naturally. Um, her right arm is completely made out of wood and roots. The fingertips of this wooden arm appear to have been dipped in some sort of a metal and they are razor sharp. Um, these roots sort of grow into her body in and out of her skin, um, leaving sort of blood and tree sap effectively and it looks just absolutely gory but she seems okay with it um there's like this cloak of leaves sort of growing around her as well and covers over her breast and her legs um and this wood seems to also grow up into her hair and out the top sort of turning into like these antlers in a way um yeah she's got this great big smile (laughs) As she's pounding down half my breakfast. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, in all reality, you eight foot, eight and a half feet. I'm at n- no more than belly button. Um, I'm, I'm. So I'm like, open the door. Huh. Hello. Good day. How you going? Hi. How's uh, how's thank how's, you. How's the breakfast? Is good. Good, good. Yeah, right. Um, mind if I have the rest? Um, so it like turns the plate to you and it's empty? Just No, no, no. Gives no, you the... the plate and just drops and walks. Yeah, right. Sweet. Uh, is there still fruit and shit? Did you touch the fruit? No. No, there you go. You got yeah, fruit. I lo- I, well, yeah, I love fruit. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> what's the... Brian, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, yeah, I, I, I eat the fruit, and I've now met a fruit by the looks of it. Uh, possibly a vegetable, not sure. Uh, uh, I go. <laughs> I have so many questions about that one. Right, great. Uh, and then I, I eat my breakfast, and I, uh, I, I presumably am aware that the the elves are more inclined to let groups of guys or people come through. Yes. Right, right. So I would probably go and see if I can find like-minded people who are uh, with a similar goal set to me to use their portal um, so I could sort of have a better chance of using it myself. Okay. Um, So you can walk down there's about uh seven or eight buildings with uh you know roughly the same size as you want and there's also one larger hall as well uh which seems to be i guess like an entertainment area it's got like long tables uh if there was to be like a, a feast or something it could be held there uh all the buildings seem to have been literally grown out the ground as the tree uh, branches are like intertwined forming these like really beautiful structures and all the uh, adornments for these buildings are just this like intricate knots of branches that form shapes of different colored wood. Right. 
Uh, well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be rude. I wouldn't like knock on people's door if they were, if they were incommunicado, maybe asleep or whatever. But uh, maybe if if the breakfast is gone, if the the breakfast has been taken, then I'm assuming they're awake. So I might then knock on the door of anybody whose breakfast has already been taken. Okay. Uh, it's here now. It's staying. Sorry, my Felix. <laughs> yep. Did you eat your breakfast? Yes. Yep. Okay. Right. And uh, Dominic, did you? I wouldn't have been out watching the watching the sunrise. Okay. All right. So uh, there is definitely two sets of breakfast gone. Uh, Tig, did you go back to your room or did you just go find other breakfasts to eat? Um, <laughs> Tig's just patrolling the holes, so just like, fish. where is this food? <laughs> I honestly probably go find more meat to eat. And along the way, would there, I'm assuming, probably be, probably just there's nature everywhere is there at any point along the way uh, a large cluster of like flowers um and like current growing vines like specific everywhere. garden sections <laughs> um i'm looking for more like an area that's being grown specifically to look like, yeah, a, like, a, like a manicured garden right kind of yeah yeah there is um there is a couple areas that are made to to look pretty that are like in between uh these sort of residential buildings so you can go there and see that but if you're just patrolling for meat uh there's two other there's so there's yours uh there's a person you stole from immediately one person actually got their food so there's one person's left uh and other than that if you want to roll me a perception check i'll see if you can find anything else uh i don't yeah i'll roll a perception check just <laughs> see what else i can find <laughs> With my perception, which I can't see. That's really with good. my microphone. That's really 19. good. <laughs> yep. So uh, you you go wandering, and you sort of go down past this long hall out the back, and then you go like down a short ways as the the glaze sort of drops off sharply through a few rocks as a path, and down there you see a circle, and there's a bunch of different meat just hanging. There is. Uh, a a full like leg, the one of the rear legs of the dragon you killed, has been descaled, and they they seem to have taken like huge chunks out. They're prepping that. There's a couple of deers. There's a wild boar, and there's two things that are humanoid, but they've been skinned and had a lot of meat taken off them. Uh, we're in wild elf territory. There's no oh, scraps. God, yes. yeah. There's no scraps. Uh, okay. they just have stopped working on it for now. Um, hello? Hello? Let me roll to see if anyone hears you. That's a no. <laughs> I'm gonna go up and touch it. <laughs> Which which one the 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 people the boar the deer the, boar. Or the dragon the boar okay so a... the the boar is more or less like it's it's just uh you know like the skull's been cracked open the, there's no brain in it there's all the organs have been looped out into into baskets next to it uh, and most of the the meat's been taken and it's just more or less like a, a hanging skeleton the sinews at this point a lot of it has been taken apart the deers are more or less intact the humans have been skinned and or humanoids i should say have been skinned and you know most the front of them has been had all the meat flayed away mm -hmm. and the dragon has these long strips laid out next to it which they seem to have some sort of powder over it okay um i'm actually gonna i the, you said the boar's mostly like a skeleton like sinews and stuff right and all the, the brain and everything were taken out into a basket next to it can yeah. I have that basket? You can just pick <laughs> up a, a basket of offal, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm gonna take the basket of offal and just go try and find Dominic. <laughs> just walking with like intestine, like oh. Pretty mm. much. All right. Oh, it's real stringy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if anyone wants to check out her D and D Beyond by using the uh, the thing on the screen, the plugin, 
I don't think her strength worries about a bit of stringy meat. She will just bite straight through that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, just, uh, just walking around. Uh, do what? Roll me a... You knew what door he was in, right? So you would also yeah. know that the, the plate of food that was there was his it hadn't been touched yet yes so do you go knock on his door with my normal arm yes with my yep. finger just gently because <laughs> <laughs> i like dominic like, okay knock, knock, knock. uh so Hello? no answers how far away did you go to watch the sunrise dom i think i would have just went to like a nearby cliff or hill um you know, just somewhere somewhere to get a good view a little bit outside of the tree break, you know? Okay. Uh, you're about 15 minutes away. Are you yelling quite loudly there, Shoru? Because you just, I, don't, I feel like you not really. kind of, you're not yelling hello very loudly? I'm yelling loud enough that it would probably wake his neighbors, but I'm not yelling all super loud that he'd be able to hear Screeching. it miles Screeching. Yeah. All right. So you don't hear anything from uh, that distance, but you also know that he's not answering the door okay um i'm i'm a um um shove no, I'm open the door. <laughs> uh roll me a strength check you will break the door i just want to see how much you break the rest of the door <laughs> the scale of one to destroyed how much of an 11 are we uh so the guys either side, which will be uh, Felix and Ballastay, hear the sound <laughs> of she's not bright. And when she went to shove, her giant hand kind of missed the door a bit and just shoved part of the wall. So like part of the front part of this residential building went down. The door itself <laughs> flew through it. And the bed has just cracked in half where the doors hit it. Uh, Dominic! Uh, so, uh, Felix, with nothing, shirt off, because he's just woken up. Oh, he's eating, but like not leaving the room, right? So he's going to have a bit of meat sticking out of his mouth. And his, his rapier is just <laughs> come down. He's like, nasty's back again. <laughs> like, so I'm like, just leave my room. And I'm like, Looking around. <laughs> what was that noise? I just um. turned to, to see Tig. <laughs> I turn around holding my basket of offal. Whereas I would have heard Tig go, hello, hello, um, and just realized that that was the enormous woman from before and uh, just thought nothing of it, really. I just, so when I heard the crashing, I'm like, yep, sounds about right. I'm gonna continue eating my fruit. <laughs> <laughs> this is delicious fruit. I'm really enjoying the rock melon and the mango uh, <laughs> and the juice, whatever it happens to be, the sort of orange cocktail concoction. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it. it's just a mixture of different uh fruits that you'd find in a forest plus a few they might have there for visitors lovely lovely fucking love it mm -hmm. uh, so when i hear the crashing and the uh the banging i'm like look i did want to meet other people <laughs> fuck it um so i also go out but i'm not in any way shocked by the scene of destruction that i witness when i do so and i go you're right in there Neighbor? Uh, do I why see Felix? That, why does that voice sound so familiar? <laughs> well, I'm literally the only person on this plane with this accent. <laughs> Where's Dominic? Dom, from where you're uh, sitting, no. you're enjoying this nice, serene sunrise. It's beautiful. You found this nice little cliff face. You're watching out. You sort of have this, like, mm. the sunlight is just golden across mm. the canopy. <sighs> maybe, maybe you could live here another 500 years with things like, BANG! <laughs> I'm an egg! And then, boom! <laughs> squawk, 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 squawk! <laughs> yeah. Ah! All the, all the birds take off. You watch as, like, animal sounds of, like, fear as things just start running away through the forest. A dragon. 
<laughs> I believe that's my uh, 9 a.m. wake up call I ordered. I better get back to the village for a bit. And yeah, I think, you know, Dom kind of slowly gets himself up, uh. you know, peacefully gathers his belongings there. Uh, and in no rush makes his way back to the back to the buildings. I have a question about Dom, just quickly. He's 500 years old. He's a human. He yeah. is presumably at this point immortal. He hasn't aged. A yes, bit. no? A little, a little bit. bit. But sort of... He looks like he's seen a lot of things. Sure. So he's got, <laughs> he's got lines, but not yeah. greys. He does have grace, yeah. He's, he does uh, have grace, like salt and pepper. stress grace sort of thing. Yeah. Salt, salt grace. and pepper yeah. grace, yeah. The ones I have in my beard, not the ones I have in my hair. Right. <laughs> I think, uh, never mind, let's not talk about that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Am I making more happen? <laughs> <laughs> A little bit, yes. Right, so uh, you sort of go walking through. Actually, you went that far away. And as you approach, you have, yes. You are crackly as fuck. Uh, cool. Let me just fix that for everyone. Shouldn't take too long. One sec. <laughs> <laughs> I'm breaking. I apologize to everyone. Hopefully, this is fixed. That's um, better. Yeah. Right. So as um as you walk back through, you walk back into this glade, and you see Tig just standing in the ruins of your little thing uh you're not sure if your belongings that you brought with you uh completely crushed in there uh but outside is this is is felix who you've met and this tall light-haired elf with like a long uh staff along his back and uh morning felix uh i take a dig as awake apparently um, <laughs> felix Good day. How you going? Fellas day. How oh, long mate. has it been? Um, I just like ah, uh, start slowly walking towards you for the hug. I uh, I sure somewhat I I, yeah, I yeah. reciprocate in a in a measured and proper fashion. Are but there is hugging. hugging. In the front the, of the one doorway? hand double pat. No. Oh yeah. No. It's a it's it's a one arm. It's a mate. Oh, it's a oh, mate it's, hug. It's, it, yeah. And then there's a pat on the back with the other arm. It's a like, mate, how you going? Yeah. Is this in front of the door that I just crashed? Quite yeah. possibly. Probably. All right, I'm I thought we, we both a hug. instantly ignored the door. Like that's. <laughs> and then I am crushed to death by a behemoth. <laughs> Tig, seeing that a hug is occurring, wants to get in. Can we can you make a strength check there, Tig, so you can pick them both up? Oh, closely? yes, I can. Oh, right no. away, is crackle. this opposed in any way? <laughs> No point. Oh, you know what? Oh, no, you could you could try a pose if you want. It might just, be. I'll be nice about this one. <laughs> she rolled a, a twelve. Yeah. Uh, look, my my strength is minus one. I acknowledge one, so... that they're weak. <laughs> my strength is also minus one. <laughs> I'm waiting for one of you guys to try to pose this. Come on. Uh, just a. Yep. So that's a that's a that's a fail. Yeah. Uh, no. Well. Oh, no, no, this sorry. is a struggle. So, check. pretty much. <laughs> Uh, as as you uh, enter this clearing and you see these two guys come together, they, they hug quickly and then you see them get lifted and they're sort of like tucked under Tig's chin. You both have rough bark that goes across her breast, like scraping on your face. As she then sees Dom over their heads. Uh, are you going to walk towards them with your two new friends? Yeah. <laughs> So you sort of get no, carried no, Jake, across. No, no, the last, the last wound has not healed. No, I, 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 I'm here, friend. Can't breathe. Jake breathe. Friends. Oh. <laughs> Felix. Hey, friends. Felix, who is this? This is Tick. This is normal, from what I understand. Tick. No, no, no. This is good. This is fine. Uh, Tig. Um. Tig. Hi, Tig. Good to meet you. Hi. Uh, can I get Dan? That's yeah. all I, I say. I just turned to Dom. Tig, I'm just like... Tig, dr drop, drop. And you fall a foot to the ground. <laughs> I, I, uh... That's, that's all right. <laughs> I'm just going to walk over to Dom and just gently pat well, it's on good his to head. see you too. 
Wait, no. Thanks, thanks for the wake up call. Can we can we not get a pat? Uh, Is that a I, I land neatly on my feet <laughs> and uh, I go Yeah, right. Uh so you you uh, you chaps are well you chaps and Tig. Uh why I, I presume you're here for the same reason I am. Uh you wanna use the fucking portal, right? Yes. Do yeah. Door. Cool, portal. cool. Uh well and, and uh so where where are you where are you guys heading? Well uh Portal? Well, after after portal, I mean uh, after the portal really. Uh, make your way to the underworld. That sounds fucking ripper, mate. Uh, <laughs> um, well, look, uh, word on the street: the the, uh, the 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 what has reached my ears as uh, has it that these elves they uh, they prefer it if uh, groups go through, uh, like as a group, as it were, and. Uh, so um, if we're all heading in the same direction, we all have a, a solid argument as to why we should be going. Um, we go? Then, uh, we, we could go, exactly. We, okay, we go. I'm, we, I'm tick, just going to go. Wait, not, Wait. not yet, Tig. Um, Come back, Tig. Oh, well, you better grab tick. your stuff, boys. <laughs> that it does like a couple well, of quick I, I did in no way say we go. <laughs> You literally said the words "we go." We did, I did, but there was a qualifying word in the in the in the, in the middle. <laughs> Tig, um, I've discovered Tig does not understand qualifying grammar. words with yes. you. With you, all right. Good to know. I'll so, remember that. I've Tig, understood Tig's why. <laughs> Tig turns. She marches towards the doors, and the guards kind of step out, cross spears, and look at you. As your friends like, no, Tig, Tig, wait. What would you like to do, Tig? Um. Can I warn uh, the guards? <laughs> hello. Uh, I I am Tig. That dumb. Um. We go. Uh, they sort I'm of just Tig. like they sigh and they look down and back up at you. We've been told not to let you through yet. The council is still convening. Uh, Could you Tig, Tig, we wait. We wait, Tig. Oh, okay. Tig, wait. Bye. Yeah. Why did Just that look at each other. I, said, didn't. <laughs> I tried to do a bit of like a, a place change with Tig up to the guards, and I'm like. So, uh, uh, the council's meeting, uh, do you know when about they might, uh, see our audience? They'll be about... Oh, look, there's still one coming from quite far out. Maybe by tomorrow sunset? Uh, it's waited a pretty long time. Another day wouldn't hurt. Thank you, thank, thank you very much. No problem, we'll be here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Well, uh, my uh, my apologies for the uh, the uh, uh, any. I just kind of like point back to the craterous hole where my door was. The disturbance. It's it's fine. Shakes his head. We're well, going to continue our patrol now, and just sort of like looks at you, and then just like like sort of glares at Tig for a second, and then shakes his head, and continues the circle. And uh, I think I would I would um, in Elvish to him just say like a little uh, because I spent a lot of time with the with the Sand Elves uh, would just say uh, kind of like goodbye. Greeting, like, uh, uh, may, may the sins guide you. Or, you're, I don't know, whatever, whatever. He raises thing. an eyebrow and he's like, your accent is terrible. Stick to common. No. It's, it's abysmal at this point. <laughs> There's a different dialect between us and the sand people. Well! So Felix, how are you going, mate? What what uh, what 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 brings you to this particular climb? Well, Valestay, I'm sorry. 
I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I'm here to go through the portal as well. I, my accent's all over the place. I'm sorry. It's early. Yes. Uh, oh, you want to know why I want to go? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <sighs> well, you see, I... I told you about my father and how he never approved of what I ended up doing and what murdering uh, people for money. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he he going is. going to war and then that this stuff like that. Uh, unfortunately, tight uh, ass pants. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he uh, sort of passed away. Um, oh. uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, mate. B- before I got uh, got a chance to see him again. Ah, fucking rough. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's sort of a bit of a, a, a personal journey, I guess. Um, yeah. So you're heading to the underworld as well, right? Yes. Catch up with your old fella. All right. Yeah. Yeah, well, well, well look, mate, you, know, we, we, you and me, we go back, back to the end zone, back to the, back to the fucking goalposts. And um, look, I'll give you a hand. I'll, I'll hook you up if you, you know, I can help you out, maybe. Maybe, mm. hopefully. Uh, are you you tagging? You know the other. You know the the. Uh, I hesitate to use a word to describe her. Um, <laughs> uh, tick. That one, yeah. That and uh, and and Dom was it? Was it Dom? Is this Dom? I... Who are you, Dom? <laughs> oh, that's uh, we haven't had a chance to meet. Uh, as I, I guess I come back over, uh, Dominic. I. Uh, does he, do you offer a hand? Yeah, uh, yeah. I I would greet you in the manner that you greet me. I reciprocate completely, um, and uh, I, I I nod to you. I, I do I get the feeling that he is he has seen a, sh- a bunch a lot of shit and he's he's been through some stuff and he's he's had a bit of a time. Make an insight check. Okay. Of the of the outstanding hand, uh, extended hand, um, it, you can see it's been kind of covered with a lot of scars that have been very worn and washed down from sand and sun and sea. Um, you can see that I've I've spent more time kind of outside at this point in my life than I have um, mm. inside inside buildings inside shelter of any kind. Um, what I'm also him- like missing an eyeball um, as well. Pertinent information. Like I, have a, I have a stack. Right, sediment. right. So you, you've seen some shit, and also missed out on seeing quite a lot of shit. Um, yeah, it's right. Been so a, I, a journey. I would say I get the impression fairly, fairly easily that you are you are a man who has been around the block, maybe more than once. And uh, so I, 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 you have you've, you're quite high in my esteem from this initial encounter, and I would say. Oh, it's good to meet you, mate. Uh, and you're you're heading to the the Feywild and then perhaps beyond as well, are you? Yeah, a little bit of a unfis- unfinished business to take care of. Sure, sure. What uh, what brings you here to the? Uh, do I have it on me? I probably have it on me. I probably don't let it out of my sight. Um, I get the uh, my staff, which is actually a scythe. Um, uh, take it off my back, and I say. This is Void's call, and uh, look, he's uh, he, he was a request from the uh, Lady of Ravens, and uh, I'm taking it back to her. Uh, that's it in a nutshell, and I need to cross the plains to do that. <clears throat> yeah. He's got a mouth on him. I wouldn't I, just watch what you say around him. He can hear. I'll uh, keep that in mind. It looks like a, a fine weapon there. Uh, and you can see, uh, like on Dominic's back, there is a a bow basically made out of two blades, two scythe oh. blades as well. Uh, but missing a missing a string or anything on it. Yeah, right. Uh, so uh, they they like it. My 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 research has, uh, indicates that these guys they like it if you've got a. A reason, like a, a good reason for wanting to cross over. That's that helps convince them to let you use their portal, despite the fact that it seems to be working constantly. Um, what's uh, do you guys have a collective vision as to why you're as, gonna, they're going to let you? 
definitely a lot of pomp and ceremony just to walk through a door, if you know what I, know. I mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think we all have some uh, pretty honorable goals here that we want to... Sounds like all, three of us want to talk to a see. god. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if that doesn't sell them... Oh, I've had, uh, had my fair share of dealing with them. <laughs> mm. I'm going to yeah, right. start, like, slipping over towards Dom, just, like, like, very gently. I've seen these guys shake hands. I'm like... <gasps> Sneak over next to him, just like <gasps> new friends. Clunk, clunk, clunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, like waiting are you being, patiently. Are you being subtle about this? No. I'm trying. <laughs> All right. Do do me a stealth check to to make it like subtle <laughs> and not. Uh... I know this is not going to go well. So. Oh, thirteen. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I believe most of you have passive perception higher than 13. Can you guys just read <laughs> out what it is? 18. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, ah! <laughs> uh, 18. Uh, 19. Yeah, 21. <laughs> All right. So she's like, she's sitting there and she's like, coming across, coming across. But she's not picking up her feet and you can see this shh, 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 and she's dragging her feet across just like the Gouges in the dirt. Yeah, gouges <laughs> just, in the dirt. Like just a slow hitting, turn. Hitting roots of plants and stuff as well. So... She's still like 25 feet away, and by this point, you're all just like looking at her as you're talking. And she probably, do you, do, you, do you stop your shuffling and just walk over, or just keep shuffling as if they're not noticing you? Uh, I will stop my shuffling and sort of just walk over a bit sheepishly and then stand next to Dom, kind of like, like, am I doing this right? I like copy his pose and then shake. Um, I. <laughs> look at the hand. Is it the metal hand, or is it oh, the, wo- the no, not metal hand? Uh, which hand did Dom shake with? Mm, probably I shook with my hand. non my non gauntleted hand. Yeah, which one's that? Uh, <laughs> that that would right. be my my left hand, technically. Okay, so I give you my normal arm. Wait, uh, sorry, uh, no, my right hand, my right hand. Okay, damn it, go, Dom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, my. I I look at it and I go. <laughs> A sort of, a sort uh, of whisper. Being I, like, I, I, sorry. Uh, I'm just looking at Dom, got just a, like the girl has got a bit of a grip. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah, you I can guess. see Dom has just kind of got a smile on his face, and he's like, "Oh, I can't wait to see how this goes." <laughs> uh, I go, um, "Tig, is it? Tig, uh, Tig. I prefer hugs, but gentle <gasps> hugs. Okay, gentle <laughs> hugs." I take a big step Hug. back. <laughs> Oh, and I, I re- and I willingly receive a hopefully gentle hug from Tig. <laughs> a two D eight hug. <laughs> Tig, yeah. just do me a favor and just roll an intelligence check. Yeah. You <laughs> it's not oh. a hard DC. It's a DC ten check. There you she go. Hey. So steps in, wraps her arms around you, and just lifts you up a little bit. Gets gentle, just a little squeeze, rocked you back and forward a bit, and you just feel your legs just like swinging around underneath you. <laughs> and then she just gently places you down. I don't dislike this, to be honest. This is fine. Um, and I say thank you, Teak. That was very nice. We friends now? Absolutely. Why not? Uh, yeah. I'm Valestay, Teak. Valestay. Why not? That's close enough. <laughs> Okay. I never liked it myself. <laughs> uh, I just look at Dom, just like. And uh, <laughs> presume you guys have met Felix? Yeah, he uh, helped us out of a pretty hairy scrape there the other day. I guess you could say we fought a dragon. I, Why could, could you say that? Did you fight that. a dragon? We fought a yeah. dragon? <laughs> yes. And you probably could say that, couldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, saying anything else would be somewhat misleading. If you claim to have, I don't know, defeated a manticore, you would be lying to me. Yeah? Tig has fought manticore. Well. Oh, how was that, Tig? Oh, fun. Tig, destroy. I think Tig and I are going to be good friends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, Tig. Where... I say that out loud Basket... in character. <laughs> where is where is Basket? Oh, no. I'm just going to go looking for it. Okay, we've lost Tig. <laughs> Goodbye, Tig. <laughs> so it looks like we've uh, got about another day or so here, probably until sundown tomorrow, that uh, they're going to have an audience with us. Ah. 
Yeah, right. Well, uh, do you guys know any good card games? In my I believe I'm proficient. Much... <laughs> you know what? I think... Hold on. I think I might. <laughs> so, as... I'm as more of a he, dice man myself. As he goes <laughs> looking for, for a game for you all to play, um, there is a small chiming bell uh, coming from that long hall. Uh, and a, a tall female elven figure steps out and uh, in elvish says, dinner is served or lunch is ready. Pig's running. <laughs> oh, lunch, yes. Look out. I probably found the basket and she's just... <laughs> Tig-shaped hole in the wall. Um, <laughs> but yes, and as you sort of come in in, in, in broken common, it's like, uh, f- food, good, good, uh, 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 gr- grain. Uh, is she an elf? Food. Yeah. Then uh, it's like, Elf, Elvish is fine, my dear. And then she says in Elvish, all of you speak Elvish? Oh, yes. I, I, I speak I'm... very Elvish, I say in bad, broken Elvish. So yeah, she uh, points and is like, uh, there's there's bread, there's fruits, there's jams. Is there any meat? Like? I haven't had any meat all day. <laughs> uh, we only have... Um, We've, we've, we're still preparing the dragon. The the toxins in its flesh could cause problems. Yeah, uh, nah, the boar yeah. was gone. The the deer was sent off to the commoners. Uh, we have some lovely dwarf shanks, and um, we have a little bit of a human thigh left. Yeah, no. Um, look, it was mainly fatigue. Uh, I'm all good with the vegetarian. To be honest, I'm I'm down with the hell. I'll go paleo. Fuck it. Well, I haven't had dwarven made shanks in a while. I say in common, they, they all sound delicious. Beer battered, I assume. Or uh... um, I'm <laughs> she... going to roll to decide this as well. She just points <laughs> over to the table where all the meat is, and you can can go nuts. Um, uh, upon upon hearing, um, human. <laughs> As I am a human, mm-hmm. I go uh, out of curiosity. Uh, out of curiosity, <laughs> what was the meat we had for breakfast? <laughs> uh, there was three of you got um, boar, and one of you got dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I rolled a sixteen. Uh, which means I, I, because I'm true neutral. Um, so this is my, my moral compass. Uh, and, uh, I decide to inform, uh, Dominic that it's not dwarven made. Well, they are dwarven made in a very literal sense. Uh, and then elven battered as it were. Uh, so if you enjoy the taste of dwarf flesh, carry on. If not, I suggest the fruit. Yeah, I think uh, I think uh, fruit might be the uh, optimal, optimal, optimal choice here to stick yeah, to. Yeah, I mean, well, where is the line, really? I mean, dragons are sentient. Um, <laughs> I've never tried dragon before. <laughs> I'm keen to do so. I hope it's ready before we leave. Uh, and I, I humanoid go to the is bar. where I usually call it. Um... <laughs> Yeah, look, any 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 more legs or fewer than two, <laughs> it's probably fine. <laughs> so the woman leaves after like twenty minutes of you guys just sort of like picking your food, eating it, you you know, drinks the uh the same guard you talked to before walks in and uh just grabs a a two hunks of meat and sits down at another table and starts eating. This is an important question. Is it obvious what kind of meat from the distance I am at? What he grabs? Yes. Uh, if you're facing the table... I wouldn't be... I'd be sitting with my back to a wall. Looking out. It 
would be fairly hard to decide what he picked up. Yeah, you, it'd be hard to figure out what he's got. Okay. Take then it doesn't bother have, me. Tig probably would have gone and selected like anything that you can tell what it is. Like if there's a foot, it's a, a hand, something like that, she's going for it. <laughs> <laughs> and she's just probably piled them up in her arms and it's just sitting there like Licking the fingers clean. Do any yeah, of you look a little on. disgusted at what Tig's doing? I'm very much to each his own. Or uh, her own. Different, uh, different cultural practices around the world. Uh, I've just... definitely seen stranger things than... Uh... Just... Season 2 <laughs> three, just isn't tears... it? I look over it just, yeah. Just pick hurting. up a torso and like, uh, just tear the torso in half. Just like... <laughs> like tear it to pieces. Like I mean, a, it can be a little unsettling at times, that's for sure. Uh, and yeah, you see Dominic like a halfway through a mango, just kind of like put it down and. and I mean, I only <laughs> had breakfast like half an hour ago. I'm I'm all good actually. You know what? I, so. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, Dominic, do you get so, used sorry. to that? <laughs> I mean, uh, throws yes, his fork and, across the room. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You get less surprised, I find. I mean, from my admittedly brief interactions with Teague so far, I doubt there's a lot that's going to surprise me at this point. Like, even now, like, I just, I've switched my surprise settings to off pretty <laughs> much. I mean, irritated, disappointed, maybe, hurt. Quite badly physically hurt sometimes, but surprised, no. <laughs> the elf Out of breath, definitely. Walks over <laughs> and sits next to you. He's like, we're not all like that one. I would worry. never assume that. <laughs> she is gifted in some ways, nodding to her arm. But I don't think she understands how to explain our culture. We leave nothing to waste. The I know it's unsettling for outsiders, both our lack of uh, what's usually considered civil decorum, fashion, and what we eat. But that dwarf, that human, they're two of several that made their way into our lands uninvited and could have stumbled across something dangerous. So we put them down. We didn't want to attract wild animals to the area. So we brought them back, prepared them, and we eat them. There's no sin in it for us, which I know is something for others. Others see it as not right, but we see everything in a cycle. Yeah, no, that's, thank you, that's, uh, it's enlightening. Um, do you mind, uh, do you happen to know what method of preparation the, I don't know, for example, the dwarfs went through? Uh, well, they came back here, they cut thinly sliced and seared just a little bit with salt. Well... What, what is the name of this place? Josh is asking. The name of where you are yeah. right now? It's the Queen's Glade. Yeah, right. I say, well, you know what, chips? When in the Queen's Glade, do as the Queen's Gladians do. And um, <laughs> and uh, I go and I, I load my plate up with a single, reasonably a medium-sized slice of dwarf. And I come back and I make every show of enjoying it. Okay. It I'm actually tastes looking, pretty good. I'm not looking for anything identifiably humanoid, but he makes a solid argument as to eating the flesh of <laughs> another sentient being. I just <laughs> I, I look over <laughs> and just as a as a as a joke. Is that a toe? And I go, no. <laughs> no, it's not. But there's the nail. That's the nail right there. That's mm. <laughs> I'm just going to put a foot in his face. Like, no, this is toe. <laughs> see? You see, <sighs> this is what I'm I trying. thought. Tig and I are going to be great mates. 
I like him. Arguably was... better mates than Felix and I, to be honest. <laughs> I was actually sent to tell you, <laughs> not for food, that uh, the latecomer has arrived early. Ah. You have about an hour, maybe two, to prepare. If eat your fill and we can send you off tonight if you satisfy the court. Mate, um, really? do you have any advice? Um, presumably you've probably seen a few uh, people come through here. Uh, do you have any advice about how to, uh, as I understand it, there's some sort of, there's some convincing to be done. Uh, what, 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 what tickles the council's fancy, as it were? Be polite, show strength, make sure that you are able to stand in the presence of the prince. Is that difficult? For some. I mean, with no disrespect, I've never met the prince. For some. You're right. If you have a good reason to go and you have the strength, they will allow it. They might ask you for a favor. They want to make sure it can be carried out. You're right. Thanks, mate. Uh, and yeah, good on you. And I finish my dwarf. Uh, excuse me. Yes. Um, and my plate is em like completely empty. The bone is like completely eaten away. Um, uh, is the river for arm? Um, are you trying to eat now um um me to eat oh oh um yes uh, we can have something brought to you if you want how much water tig a bucket a big a big bucket <laughs> i clarify to the elf we have some fresh water that can be brought to your chambers it'll be fine but I should, you know what? It's it's fine. I feel like you've had enough lessons in our culture for today. <laughs> if you have anything else you want to know, ask. And he just sort of moves back to his table. I don't. Well, uh, it's been a lot of time since I've uh, spent any time in court with princes and the like, but. Uh... Oh, they can be a finicky bunch. Mm. Uh, whether or not you agree in your with experience, them, do they like hugs? Better to no, no. They 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 mostly will stab you if you hug them. You're yeah, right. Should we? And I say this with love. Uh, warn or in any way prepare Tig here for this encounter. I think we just need to. Pick our words very carefully. Sure, sure. Yeah, right. Uh, just some ground rules, possibly. Like, Tig, Tig, don't, don't, when, all right, no, we'll do it when we get there. Don't worry, Tig, we'll get you a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you guys finish up and you uh, leave the hall, you actually see that it's sort of like a twilight already. Um, time doesn't work the same way here. They've, they've got you out of the way in the hall and they sort of dress the area up. Um, there's this, there's this like soft breeze blowing here. The faintest of like wind chimes. This, the fake court or the Queen's Glade has a um, very tranquil feeling about it. Uh, you're immediately filled with this like sense of warmth and light and feeling safe. This twilight uh, just seems to permeate everything. Any thoughts you had before when you was in the hall uh, that left you ill at ease are gone, and this very mild weather, like an early summer morning, uh, just sort of relaxes you. Um, you can see now that the patrols are gone. And instead, there's more or less a ring of of uh, wild elf guards, and they're all heavily tattooed, and are either naked or wearing gowns of gossamer silk that just seems to both cling to their bodies and and move gently 
in the breeze in this like aesthetically pleasing way, but you can feel no breeze on your cells. You can hear these wind chimes, you can hear the whistling of it through the trees, but there's no movement of air on you. The whole area is filled with the sense of like, you know, spring flowers in bloom and, and uh, rosewoods and honey. And it's just, it's very calm, very relaxing, very nice as you see the doors to the courtyard crack open just a touch. And when you've got anything else you want to get, you want to grab all your belongings, you can go in there when you wish. I think leaving the food hall area, um, as you say, we go out into this this absolute surreal calmness. Um, I think Tig probably changes from this absolute beast eating food to just very calm and placid and walking very gently and very slowly. Um, probably just to the nearest tree um, and probably just spend some time staring at it for a bit um, and in a way compare arm like is this where it came from or no and then sort of just look a bit sad and head back on her way as you hold up your arm you see through the the cracks all the way down it there's these small buds that have reacted to this sort of like magic placed over the, the whole area and these small flowers of like uh purple and blue seem to bloom all the way down your forearm and to your elbow so just between your wrist and elbow you get this uh very pretty bouquet on your arm Aww. thank you arm i love you too <laughs> and start walking off with a big smile on her face Um, I have a question for uh, Nova. Um, how recently did I provide a soul for Void's call? I would have imagined on the way in here, you would have had to fight maybe, even if it was just uh, like a, a goblin or an orc, you probably would have to push something to get here because mm -hmm. uh, you did travel quite a long way by yourself and you would have seemed very vulnerable with just a staff not knowing that it could turn into the blade that it is. Mm. So probably cool. a day ago. So, so I've got a couple of days before it starts really acting up. Yes. Cool. Um, then I grab my shit and I get ready to go. I also, uh, if, if the bucket does not arrive, I do chase up the bucket. There is a, <laughs> there is a bucket. Uh, it is about a foot and a half tall, uh, sitting just inside the door of Tig's room, two-thirds filled with water. Tig, however, has not returned to her room. Yep. Well, <laughs> that's where they said it would be waiting, so that's yep. where it is. Uh, um, I would duck my head back out, and um, not with it wanting to disturb the the preternatural calm and peace of the place, I would go back over to Tig and just say, Tig, my dear, there's a mm. bucket of water in your room for you for arm." If Arm okay. is thirsty. And she sort of just wanders over a little bit, dazed, sort of kind of spaced out like, okay. And heads All right. back to her room to the bucket. And you probably see her get to the bucket and just sit down next to it and submerge Arm. I guess. Just drowns it. <laughs> <laughs> and I nod once to myself and was like, Yep, no, that was about what I was expecting, and I go and get my shit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so do you all just go grab your stuff, or is there something else you want to do before you head into this court? I mean, uh, I got to dig through a pretty big pile of rubble, I think. <laughs> um, but just yeah, I would definitely make your bed a little bit, like <laughs> sort through the room and, and grab uh, what few belongings I have at this point. Okay, I'm destroyed by the door. <laughs> yeah. I'm just probably like washing arm at this point and like holding it in and sort of just washing it over with some water so it can get some. As as you do it, as your hand comes near it, these little blooms just into the arm and as they go past, they pop back out so you can never really harm them. Yay. Arm is so clever. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. Um, 
what like are you guys gonna just wait outside the door so you go in as a group or just wander in individually oh i would i would wait yeah i'd, yeah. I'd also Same. wait okay so i guess it'd probably be you dom that would take the longest you have to go like actually scrounging through things and moving rubble but once you do you are uh, all find your way just uh outside this door and the guard you've seen before just like gestures with a spear and nods and you can uh walk in when you want i'm following behind dominant at, at every step of this okay yeah there's this blinding light as you walk into it and as you sort of cross the threshold that light is gone it's just sort of shell it's a it's a effect you can automatically see is some magical effect to stop you from being able to view inside without entering the court is an open green glade with seven chairs that they've been grown from root and branch uh the three to the left and right have an assortment of nobles each wearing a different color with matching flowers springing from their chairs the nobles languidly turn their heads towards you with a mixture of expressions some bored some curious others seem annoyed by your presence uh, in the central and seventh chair is the last elven lord. His chair is made from roots of the great tree that seems to just uh, shoot up into the canopy, uh, into the clouds. Uh, it is just, it is by far just the greatest tree you've ever seen. It's, it's, it's gargantuan. Uh, its trunk just pierced to the sky and many of its branches are surrounded by clouds with small ghost lights flickering among its uh, many branches. The central lord is a handsome elven man and his long blonde hair falls about his shoulders onto what appears to be a blanket or draped cloak made of leaf and vine. One arm lies beneath it and the other arm sits on top of his throne within reach of a very tall spear, a lot more refined looking than the one you saw outside with a uh, long curving mithril blade. Most of the glade is in shadowed from his twilight except for seven beams of sunlight that filter in through the canopy canopy uh six on the lord's left and right and one on your assembled party there's not one on that seventh lord shadow lord yes <laughs> uh when you get to sort of the center of the glade that lord holds his hand up seemingly to stop his eyes flow from one of you to the next to the next and as he looks at you you feel this almost just immeasurable weight of his judgment pressing down on you and his presence seemed to fill the glade the other nobles shift uncomfortably in their seats as his like sight plays across the entire area i need each of you to make a wisdom save <laughs> good <laughs> Uh -oh. That's a one. Bad oh. God, am I ever gonna play a character with a wisdom score? <laughs> oh wow! You did it. You yeah, did it, buddy. So, agent, sorry, Dom and Tig both stand there. You feel this weight push down on you, but you are both very old and have been through some horrendous things, and his judgment doesn't have the same effect on you as it does the others who while they've been through some things it's not the same as a human that's 500 years old and should be long dead and an elf that more or less escaped the end of a plane but to the other two you're sort of forced to your knees to kneeling before the council without uh unwillingly you can't help it uh, may I, um, I, I've been anticipating needing, uh, being, being sort of needing to kneel. And I, I almost before it begin, like I can feel it begin and I actually preempt it. Is that all right? You can um, feel it begin and sort of like, it's kind of like a, if someone pushes you, you allow yourself to fall. So you, yeah. And I take, I take the knee on purpose and sort of bow my head to him in a respectful manner. Okay. All of a sudden, that pressure lifts on all of you. And the prince smiles. <sighs> what are your names, travellers? What's brought you 
before us today. I'm gonna sort of shove Dominic forward a little bit. Just so that you can cool. Just... <laughs> yeah. I'm Dominic Safroy, uh, known sometimes as the Wanderer. We've come to seek your audience to gain access to the other planes. Why would you like access to the other planes? What about them has you so curious, Wanderer? For me, it's unfinished business. Uh, uh, curse of some sorts that I need to see an old friend about. Where do you think this friend resides? Where would he be? She would be in the underworld. The underworld? Interesting. And the rest of you? Uh, I take a step forward. My name is uh, Felix O'Fara. And then uh, my, my business is a, a, th a thing of closure. Um, I, I wish to see my, uh, my, my father who um, passed on. Do you know where he would be? Passing on doesn't mean he's, uh, he could be anywhere. Really? Um, does, would my character know? Was he a good man? Do you know who he worships? Oh, like... uh, yeah, so I know, like, because he was pretty much, like, yeah, I was super close to my father, so he, he was a good man. He, I know his religion, you know. Okay. Um, yeah. So maybe you should respond that to the elf. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. He was a very good man. He lived a he lived a good life. I uh, I think he would be in a in a good place. I hope so too. But you could also be a victim of a son's naivety. And you, young Shadakai, tell me why you wish to. Head beyond. Well, <clears throat> my home lies beyond, uh, but quite beyond that, uh, I have business with the Raven Queen. Uh, well, the, the Lady of Ravens, I don't know what we call her here. Hang on, that's Josh speaking. <laughs> um, I have business with the Lady of Ravens, uh, or rather, this stick has business with the Lady of Ravens. Polite business. Um, she asked it of me, and I brought it to her. Or at least that's what I'm trying to do. You have business with Hera? Interesting. Well, I think more she has business with me. <laughs> hmm. Well, you young Tigariel are known to us. Why are you wishing to travel? Uh, take go get wife. Oh, uh, it seems lost for a second. Like, okay, where is your wife? Take don't know. Um, uh, Nissa. One one day, um, go to bed and not wake up. Um, like when tree lose leaf and leaves stay on ground for very long time. Nissa stay like that for this many. So Tig go for walk for this many. Um, and get lost. So then take come home and Nissa gone. And take need Nissa. So, so take go for a walk and 
and go get Nissa. Okay. Okay. How did how did she pass? How did she become like Leaf, little Tig? Tig don't know. Was she? Uh, Varike, could you please? And this male elf walks over and says, if you don't mind, I would like to try to read your thoughts. Uh, as empty as this may be. Oh, okay. Take say, okay. Here. Uh, Lays a hand just like gently on your temple and utters a small spell mm-hmm. and then walks over to the prince and whispers something. The prince just nods. Well, we're not exactly in the business of offering closure to anyone. You might have to do something small for us. Wait, wait, uh, hang, uh, hang, wait, wait, um, um, say something. What? She's like listening to her arm, like with flowers on it. Arm um, say tree friend would let me. Just like looks at you, and then you all hear this resounding boom, 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 and a massive treant just pushes his way out of the forest and sort of stands, and he's only got one arm. Huh. The little one is right. They should be allowed passage. She can help. We have had some issue. The Endless Lord hungers for elven souls. Less and less do we come back. Can I... Would I know anything about what he's talking about? And if uh, so, can I insight a... it? Make it insight check. <clears throat> and it'd be a 28. Yeah, sure, why not? Um... <laughs> Love that plus 11. <laughs> yeah, that's massive, man. It's <laughs> huge. Uh, so what he's talking about is the Endless Lord is the god of death and he defies the rules of most gods by trying to take any souls that he can. He wants all souls to come to him. He doesn't want to allow them to go to their respective afterlives. And wild elves, um, you've learnt a bit through, you know, your time. You're a fairly religious man, I believe. Yeah, I I, I like to look into the why of things. Um, so my own religion would be the f- following the the um, Lady of Ravens, but um, that sort of tends its way to looking into any religion I encounter as a objective curiosity. So the wild elves believe that their souls are reborn from this massive tree, from right. the world tree. They think it's part of their life cycle. They uh, worship the world itself and you would have everyone would know that wild elves are incapable of doing magic arcane magic for the most part they need to have uh a a patron or a um or druidic magic but generally that's from sylvanus the, the 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 god of the world it's it's literal spirit it allows them to do things that a lot of other casters cannot so what he's referring to is that this endless lord is stopping that natural cycle of rebirth that these elves have. Yeah. 
Good. <clears throat> would this Good. The endless Lord God of Death, would he be the one I would have known from before with the scythe? The no. Different god. Okay. Try to remember now. No, I don't think so. No, okay. Do we go through gods of death quite a lot? Like, is there a big turnover in the job position? Uh, there was one that existed for a long time uh, who was both, like, it was a, a neutral god, which, like, most you guys would know about uh, Phrasma. And she was a judge and made sure people went to the right place. Uh, the analyst lord consumed the astral plane, which is where she resided. Ah. Dick. And a lot of other deities as well, for that matter. Mm. Does Tig know any of that? Because she met. Look, you don't know your one times tables, right? So. (laughs) I know, I know, but she met some of the people who made. Make a religion check. Religion? Oh, God, okay. (laughs) Negative three. Oh, well, there you go. You're 13. You're rolling really well. Roll 20 loves Tig, if you recall. I do recall. Um. (laughs) I think we all love Tig, really. <laughs> just Tig is down. lovable. Yeah. <laughs> so you you sort of like a little bit know of these things. It's not like you uh, remember it and be like, oh yeah, I learned about that. It's just like as people are saying, like yeah, I know all this stuff. I've mm-hmm. always known this stuff. I just didn't know that I know this stuff till I knew it. I am Got always it. knowing this. Yes, I love it. Okay, I'm we are always are knowing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Tig's just cool. So, <clears throat> the Elven Prince looks to all of you, waiting to see what you have to say for yourselves. So, <laughs> well, you want us to deal with this god of death? Is, is that the favor? Is that. If, if what he says is true, you could free Elven souls to return. That would be much more than what I originally planned. Yeah, uh, way to put words in his mouth. Um. <laughs> there's, there's a, what I wanted you to do was hunt down a soul thief who maybe took three or four souls, one of which, which I believe would be Nissa's. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We, we do that. That sounds much easier. That's... Yeah, then uh, killing in the terms uh, of endless a... hungering one. Uh, uh, Taking on a deity who's devoured entire planes seems, uh, uh, frankly, a little above our pay grade. I don't think you are all big and strong like Tig. So we do that, get big and strong like Tig, and we go for a walk, and then we try for big, scary one. Yes? Yeah, right. Uh, You wouldn't be fighting the god of death directly. You'd fight his gatekeeper. Okay, we do that. Well, that sounds more... Just... Don't get... If you do this, strike hard, strike fast. Do not draw the attention of the Endless Lord. So, uh, can I just... The soul faith is the gatekeeper? No, um... There was a... a wizard, a... Yes? Oh, a crackling? Yeah, yeah. Coo! Um... There was a wizard called Kazo. He made various pacts with people. If they did not follow through, souls were taken. And he always played that he was helping. But we have lost a lot. Because the souls of Wild elves are tied closely with nature and effectively immortal. We have a certain value to demons, demons, and devils. 
Well, look, that all sounds bloody reasonable. Uh, we'll certainly look into your uh, your issue and uh, before we proceed along our own merry ways. If you are agreeing to this, to what... <sighs> if you want to take out the gatekeeper, free elven souls, you will require a token of passage. And if you do not complete this job for us, the way back will remain closed. Perfectly reasonable. Uh, is there a, well, presumably we can't come back until we've done the job. Is that what you're saying? That is correct. Fair enough. The green man of the forest has told us what he wants. And while I am Lord of the elves here, he is Lord of the forest and I somewhat defer to him. And you, young Tig, are hmm? apparently his little protege. Uh, I have a, I have a, a query. Um, this is more for my own edification than anything else. But uh, may, may I ask a question of the the wise man of the forest? You may. <laughs> Your arm, sir. Is that the one that's currently inhabiting Tig's right shoulder? That is correct. Uh, what will happen to Tig long term? With the whole symbiosis business? I ask merely out of curiosity, not judgment. Tig's covering her ears. That oh. waits to be seen. She's like excited. Just She is strong-willed. That is not untrue from my experience. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your clarity. Do you wish to pass now or do you have preparations to make loved ones to say goodbye to? Oh no, we go to find. <laughs> I believe loved ones are what we're seeking, not what yeah. we're leaving behind. <laughs> If you can, look after Tig. I raised her when her family died. She is like a daughter. You would do well to look after her. She is the key to all of this. Well, I can assure you in my short time, she's done a lot more looking after me than the other <laughs> way around. As strange as it may seem. She pats him on the head. She does that. He throws his remaining hand up towards the tree. And one moment. It seems to crack from the base up. Uh, large amounts of bark peels back and splits. The air smells of ozone and burnt wood as a rift in space appears within the tree. It's bound by these powerful magics that dance as they grow to accommodate the doorway to this other realm. This fat red and purple spark spit from the bound lightning that makes up the door's edge until it finally settles open and stable. You look through to this just gorgeous world overflowing with life in a kaleidoscope of colors. We'll take a very short break. And you guys can go dive in. Yeah, go playing with portals. <laughs> Catch you soon, guys. Welcome back, guys, to our first episode of Heart of the Plains, our new 5e D&D campaign. These guys are high level. We're going to level 16. Uh, as it is a continu continuation on of a... Uh, long previous game. The first session we played in this first first campaign we played on this channel, uh, starting June last year, ran for about two and a half, three months. Is that right, Agent? Yeah, three months. 
Yep, cool. Yep. Um, so currently, these guys have gone to an end lady, have gone to a elven court, have managed to talk to some lords and state their case. It was just very, very quick, formal little, we'd like to use your door. We're not sure if you should use our door. Tree says they can use the door. So now they can use the door. That is the shortest description I can give you of what just happened. Um, they've agreed to do some favors. So we will pick it up as the portal has just snapped into existence, it's finished being made. You all are approaching it as the prince steps down from his throne. And as he does, his like a cloak of leaves falls aside and you see that angling across his chest and down is completely made of wood. He seems to almost grow out of it. And as he enters the, the sunlit beams that come down, he turns this like ethereal green and his hair seems to like flow out as if he's like ghostly and not really there. He has uh, a four clawed arm, much like Tig's, but thinner, more spindly. And he, as he stands up on these long branch like legs, he's a good like nine feet tall. So he actually looks down on Tig just a little bit as he strides over to you and he holds up a coin, puts it into his clawed hand and squeezes. And he hands one to each of you, and it has this uh, small symbol burnt into it. It's a, it's a, like a branch with a leaf on it. You will need this to pass through, and you will need this to come back. If you have not completed your quest, well, the portal doesn't, doesn't work. Uh, mate, whenever I make a pact with somebody, I like to know the name of the man I'm making a pact with. You have mine. May I have yours? My name is Prince Araeloth. Could you spell that for me, mate? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Araeloth. A R E Y E L O T H. Oh, I almost guessed right. Tig can't write. Don't worry, okay. Tig. No. <laughs> I, I'll write another one for you, Tig. Arkad, thank you very much thank for the, the, the raid, buddy. Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah. That's a, that's yeah. a raid and a half. That's well, a lot of noon. That's everybody. a lot of damage. Wow. Yeah. Hi, Hanoon. Hanoon. Hanoon rolls for 135 damage. Ugh. So... <laughs> Do you have any questions you would like to uh, ask this prince before you all step through? Why is it pretty? Like, more? <laughs> That's the Fae. That's what it is. It's a realm beyond meaning and sense. Do you it's... have any advice for surviving in a realm beyond meaning and sense? Uh, find Kononos. He is one of the lords of that realm. He will. He's also master of the hunt. Yep. Do not anger him. He doesn't like arcane magics much. <laughs> That's pretty much all of us. Uh... <laughs> Uh, I just like turn to Dom, just like, uh, is Tig okay? Tig is great. Don't even worry about it, Tig. Yeah. Okay. Um, where, where is he? In there. He'll be hunting, most likely. If you hunting hear the horn what? sound, he's found his prey. What he hunt? Mm, Everything. Good question. <laughs> what he <take> like? <laughs> might, <laughs> might he hunt us? Possibly. Take play. Take play. Take play. Um, uh, that that does raise an interesting point. Uh, 
were Tig 2, and I don't know the answer to this one, but I do suspect it, uh, play with Kernanos, uh, would it go well for Tig? No. No. No, it would not. I didn't think so. Good. Good uh, to know. Uh, so we'll avoid playing with Kernanos and maybe just become friends with him instead. Kernanos is closer to a demigod than anything else. And not like the poultry one you fought in the past, Dominic. Wait, <laughs> wait, you guys fought a demigod? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good to know. Dominic, yeah. you and I are going to have to have a chat. Uh, I'm going to, I've got some whys I need to ask you there, but uh, that can wait. Um, uh, my lord, any advice for us before we step through? Aside from seek out Kernanos, who sounds like a top black. You'll find shadows in the darkness. I usually do. Um, well. And I battle him and I begin to go. Okay. Uh, there's no ghosts. No. He. Oh, I like, like, like bad magic man. Bad music man. There will be plenty. You may just have to Tig. be brave, Tig, and then I'll head no. off after uh, Valister. Tigario. And he steps mm. towards you and turns ethereal and ghost like and like teleports mm. next to you. Mm. And he does this quick and he stops. Mm. You are the reason for this. You are the progenitor of the triads and the branch beings. Keep pushing forward, be brave, and no ghost can touch you. Do you Take understand? Like tree. Do you want to be like this? And he steps back showing himself. Then yes. I want to be like this. Like and points to like all the nature around. Just like, this is Tig family. You're on your way, little one. Don't worry. Okay. And we go. Go. Okay. Tig's gonna start running. <laughs> so as you go jumping through like a nutcase, uh. Have you gone through yet, Dom? No, no. I think uh, uh, having them all pass me, I would I would go up to the prince and pull a small Minoan coin that I've kept hold of all these years and hand it to him and say, only seems fair uh, trade for a trade. I can't guarantee you're going to get this other one back. He sort of looks at it, looks up at the tree and who nods to him and turns away. He looks back at you. Tigariel is a damaged individual. Everyone that she's cared for has died. And she's found them every time. The green man of the forest thinks that it has broken her sanity and it's why she is the way she is. Well, I know you wish to lift your curse, but if you could help her complete what she wants, maybe find a way to restore her. I would be I'll grateful. See her reunited. That I can assure you. Thank you, Dominic Safroy. Off you go. Your Majesty. And uh, yeah, I walk through the portal, uh, take a little last look at the world uh, before I hop through. And then, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, as you have a look, last look through, uh, Five of the six still seated elves stand and look to you and nod. They know what you're doing. One of them, 
as you sort of step through, your brain clicks that you recognize. Uh, he would have traveled with you for a little while as you were journeying around uh, with the with the sand elves, with the blood elves. He was sort of going incognito, you know, getting mm-hmm. some some youthful exploration out the way, as young nobles like to do. Classic it. noble, yeah, yep. Uh, so yeah, you've just sort of. You guys had votes, by the way. I had a list here of votes and what you're saying and who would be voting for and against. Oh. And uh, you you got through by two votes. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Yay. Victory depth. <laughs> no! No! Take no. pulls your armor. <laughs> we we right, just so lost a you... vote there. Right there. <laughs> so, you... I think that weird. You step through. And with a loud percussive bang, the portal is gone. You're in a, another small glade. A thick forest surrounds you with this just immense sky above you. It seems bigger than it should be. Like it could, could contain all of the planes, all of the universe, all of the spheres that are all the other multiverse that are out there. Every, everything could exist beneath the sky. It seems to just reach into infinity, but also as you look at it, close enough that you could just reach out and and touch the clouds that seem to just drift slowly through it. You hear a faint rustling as you stand there and the two-toned leaves all move on a wind that once again you don't feel. As you look around, the leaves are of these indescribable colours, none the same as another. You turn on the spot to, to look around at this glade you're in and this beautiful realm that you find yourself in, you see that the leaves flow from one color to the next, like perfectly. There's no, there's no way to tell one color from the next, it just all sort of blends seamlessly around in this uh, sea of color. From moving fluidly from like yellow to orange to red to purple, deeper to blue, then brighter back to green and so on. The effect is startling and messes with your senses a little bit as you're trying to find the edges. You also notice that the coloured hues aren't restricted to like one tree then the next. It's as if all the trees have conspired with each other to create this effect for anyone that steps through the portal. To your left, as you look, is a mountain range that you can see above the trees with the sun setting behind it. And to your right is a dark night sky far in the distance with no stars twinkling in it. What are you guys doing? Wow, okay. Uh, who steps through first? That would be Valiste. Okay. Was I pretty much directly after Valiste? Uh... Or was no, it him, I think then it Felix? was him, then Felix, then you, then Dom. Okay. Uh, I think I'd probably go running, barreling through, come through this and see all this and sort of just, ah, oh, okay. And sort of just lie down and just like do snow angel on the floor and just like looking up at it all. As you lay down into the grass and go to like lay down, all the grass just into the ground. <gasps> And then as you try to like touch it underground, and as soon as you move your hand away from it, it just springs back out. Very similar to what your arm did earlier. Um, it just doesn't want to be touched. If you try to like, just put your hand near it, it's like it knows that if, if you're going to try to touch the ground with it and it shrinks underground, but if you just hover above it, all the grass bends away from you. Okay, Tig's probably playing with this at this point, just like, <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. It's just grass. <sighs> like, she's amazed by this. <laughs> and she's put, like on her knees, just like shuffling forwards, like hovering her hands over the grass. I would. This this fascinates me. Um, I attempt to touch the grass myself, probably quite casually. Uh. As you try to touch it, um, 
you touch the ground and that it sort of has all bent away to just so you touch the dirt and as you touch it it's like the grass ripples away and it changes from green to red and up into the trees you hear another rustle and it's like the leaves disappear because every single item is now pointing on end towards you do i sense any threat or danger from this uh make an insight check good good Yeah, that's a 28. Not danger, but wariness. It's, uh, they are unsure of you. Yeah, right. Um, would I know, would I have been to the Feywild before? Uh, no, you got pushed directly from the Shadow Plane to the material. Yeah, right. So I've never stepped in this way. Uh, would I know of any way to indicate to the world that we do not mean it harm the tig particularly does not mean it harm uh i don't know you'd have to tig figure that just... one out so i yeah sure read about this i'd assume like the the nature of this plane is not known yeah, right. to you. um well i've got a presumably i have a water skin or something yep i uh kneel and um, take out my water skin and basically just water the ground water the grass um, just a little bit just sort of in a big circle around myself okay um, as you do that the ground undulates towards you and it's like the grass all starts trying to get to it and some grows longer and reaches over another and you get these sort of weird tangling messes that climb to about your mid thigh height am i restrained by this or is it no just... it's in a circle around you where you watered it yeah right i think um, it likes you uh it likes water <laughs> uh, but yeah um it's grass it would it would that's that was my logic too tig um I'm, Tig's gonna get up from the ground and you said all these trees are covered in just this beautiful surreal color and um, like the leaves are two-toned and it sort of was wary at us like the, the trees were or just the grass it was wary at uh Ballister. I, Ballister, yes okay I'm gonna go up to that tree very gently just like, hi it was all the trees that did it Okay, well, I'm going to go up to a tree that did it. And she's like, hi. And, like, try to touch it, see if it sort of... I'm expecting it to disappear, but I'm touching it with arm and arm. So you touch the tree with your wooden hand and mithril fingertips? Yes. It's sort of... Um, you feel the bark shift under it. And so sort of like humans interlock fingers, mm -hmm. all the bark shifts so it sort of forms in the cracks of your bark and it's sort of like like forms a nice neat surface across it. It almost like a jigsaw puzzle it just locks into place and you have to sort of like pry your hand out. It doesn't hurt, it doesn't hold you, but it's like that little as it comes out. Okay. Like, Hi. Hello. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh um, can say hello for us, I think. See? Right. Good job, Tig. <laughs> I'm just like looking for the I feel like Tig buds. requires positive reinforcement constantly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's yes. Like, good pad. <laughs> it's, it's like, I wouldn't say anything normally, but it was like, she's going to keep talking until we say yes or no. <laughs> until so, we acknowledge her, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she well, did a good Dom's thing, and, you know, we got a patter on the back for that one. Good on you, well, Tig. I mean, well Dom's done. not here, so. Yeah, he is now. Dom? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, Dom. <laughs> So what are the rest of you doing as they play with grass and trees? Well, I'm very much scouting yeah. all the horizon. Like I'm, I'm on full guard, you know? Um, I think okay. uh, we would be wise not to tarry here too long. 
I the play they 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 from what I understand uh, they play by a different set of rules than our own. Even the grass, the trees, they're not always what can be expected. I get you all to make perception checks at disadvantage, please. Oof. There are six things. How do you have three rolls for your perception? I... Reliable talent. No. You can't roll below a ten. Ah. Uh, As a rogue. Yep, that is 100% correct. So the minimum you get is 17? No, the lowest you can get is 18. Jesus! (laughs) Alright. Um... Uh. Cool. So, uh, we've got a 13, an 18, a 17, and are you just too busy doing other stuff there? Uh, I rolled a 16. I rolled a pair of them. Oh, okay. Sorry. My thing is... The, I was, I was the first to roll. It's not showing the word for what you're rolling, so to see who's the last one is. Uh, yeah, no. But okay, cool. So, um, you all are sitting there chatting, and um, Dominic... As you're saying, we've got to be careful. Got to be remember. your gauntlet just clangs to the floor, like off my hand. Off your hand. What? That's not. Uh, I pick it. I pick it back up. Or try to pick it back up. As you pick it up, you feel this little bit of resistance. Just this, this little, little tiny bit. And as you do it, the the bull's head on your shoulder, I believe it is. Um, yeah. Sort of like the strap keeping it up there at the back falls off and it swings down across you. Throwing you uh, of balance. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that throwing me off, I, I grab my bow and I'm just like spinning around looking for something invisible. <laughs> I cast true seeing on myself. I'm going to go over and stand beside Dom. Okay. Um, you cast True Sing on yourself? Yes. Uh, what level spell is that? That is a sixth level spell. Fuck it. Right. So in the distance, there's. Oh, no. Jolly good. <laughs> Whoop. Well, that was quick. Um, <laughs> and. Uh, doesn't mess around, does he? Prey found. <laughs> <laughs> on yeah, top good. of your gauntlet, two tiny little pixies become visible, look at you wide-eyed and just off into the trees, just leaving. They've left your gauntlet on the floor. Uh, Mate, uh, Dominic, (laughs) that gauntlet of yours, uh, is it supposed to just fall off? Uh, No, it's absolutely not. (laughs) It's a gift from Athena. Yeah, right. Does it, in fact, come off normally? (laughs) Not normally, no. Oh, Uh, good. And I try to pick it up again and, and slot it on okay it does like re go over and it's a little bit big at the moment uh, but after about a minute it just shrinks down again to fit right. snugly in your arm yeah good uh, uh, if this place has this kind of powers we, we I'd hate to know what else is in here uh Han. Boo-boo. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. Should we should we seek out? I mean, we were told to seek out Kernanos. Yes. Uh, uh, so we can hear the horn. It could be assumed that we are what he is hunting, or he's hunting something else. But one way or other, we were told to seek him out. Well, uh, we would be not enemies of him. No. So as long as we... Hmm. Oh, if Approach he's... peacefully. No, if he's if he is wild elf, you don't need to be enemy. Just yeah. weak. Well, cool. <laughs> so, uh, as you, I may the, suggest- the horn sounds again and seems to be where it was maybe like, you know, four or five kilometers out before. It's now right near, like maybe a kilometer away. And on top of that, you can hear the howling of wolves to what you'd assume is like the north and south of you, like the left or right. Okay. Oh, there's only one way to impress a god of the hunt. 
uh, and I draw an arrow. I pull my rapier out. Um, try to hunt right back. <laughs> Probably. Um, yeah. Great. Uh, I considered making a tiny hut, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> <and> hiding. <laughs> Um, but uh, no, I like your plan too. Let's go with that. Uh, right, I, I, to... I draw my staff, but I do not summon the the blade bit. Uh, so it's just the staff at the moment. I want to look prepared, but not aggressive. Yes. Okay. I'm just uh, going to populate the map for you. Oh, just good. in case this goes the way it might go. <laughs> just in yeah. case the way we <laughs> intended. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> yep, yep, that's exactly in... right. So, as soon as Dominic appears, there he is. All right, you guys. So pretty much that little bit you're in there that kind sure. of looks like water. Not, yep. not so much. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's like maybe it's water, but it's like maybe an inch deep, sort of thing. Um, so you're not, you know, getting wet. You're just standing in it. Love. Um, and that rock. That's like in the middle of you is where all the is where the portal came through. And I'll get producer Vez just to throw this up on the screen for now, just in case it ends up being a battle. At least everyone can see it. So the horn sounds, the howling of wolves continues, and you start hearing rustling in bushes. Can I get everyone to roll initiative for me, please? Absolutely. Initiative. Aww. Oh, I Eight forgot to select I forgot the to token. Yep. Oh, same. whoops. Classic. <laughs> <laughs> we all did. Ooh. Okay. Oh, <clears throat> it's a really good roll as well. <laughs> okay. How do I even it? <laughs> all right. So it's all right. I can I can add it to if I have to. Just uh, I'll get you guys to tell me what your initiative is now. So I'll I'll add it in a minute. I think sure. I can do that. Uh, Four. So we got uh, Val at twenty-four. We got Dom at what? Uh, Fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah. We got Tig at what? Eight. Eight. I love how the hype train is just going to fill up the Harrow Bar, and that's it gonna... is. <laughs> uh, and then we've got Felix at. All right, so what I'll get you guys to do as well is uh, so click on your token. Open up your character sheet. I believe you, it's, is it hold shift double click? Yep. You can then go to your character sheet, hit initiative there, and it will re-roll it for us, and it'll put it into that turn order, and I'll just adjust uh, to the new thing. Oh, yeah, we can adjust in that turn order. I forgot yeah, about yeah. that. I didn't know so, we could do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it makes it easier. Yeah. So, you want me to click on the token and re-roll initiative? Hold shift, double click your token. This is also a roll 20 tutorial for those out there. Yeah. So hold shift, double click the token. This is, uh, you'll learn a little on this channel sometimes. Yeah. Uh, I just learned that you can double click your token. I'll double click. Yeah. There you go. What is this right. hype train? It's amazing. Hype train. Uh, Dom had 14, Valis had 24, Phyllis 25. Awesome. That's what we wanted. Oops. Right. Let me hit enter. Cool. So, as you're all standing there preparing, uh, Tig, did you actually run off into the distance, or are you back there with us? No, I didn't. That was just so that I could do that and open up my cool. sheet at the same time. <laughs> Sorry. You hear, and it seems to echo around you. Arcanist, and it's not coming from any one direction. Like I said, it's it's. It's multiple directions all at once. There is a blur of motion. Valiste. Good. I had to cast True Sight. <laughs> I need you to make a athletics or acrobatics check for me. Your sure. choice. Uh, well, it's going to be acro. Um... And it's going to be shit house. That's a nat one plus six. Oh, well, maybe he'll also roll on that one. Just, just hold one second. 
No, he won't. <laughs> there is yeah. literally a one in 20 chance of that. <laughs> yeah, so it's not that bad, right? It'll be fine. Uh, cool. All right. Let's let's uh, let's do this. Where is his athletics? All right. So one minute, Valiste is standing there. The next, faster than most of your eyes can track. Make perception check for me. Well, Valiste is... Gone. So I'm not rolling perception. <laughs> uh, I mean, you're being carried away, so you kind of know what's happening. I'm curious. Oh. I'm just going to roll anyway. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too amazed by shiny trees. That'll do. Right. I'm going to just make him roll a uh, flat dex to see if he does it. So that's a 30. So he's a... Uh, he is fast as fuck, boy. Uh, did I just, just hear a 30? <laughs> Yeah, you, you did. did. God damn. What part I, I of demigod? the word demigod the before. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I did hear so. him described as that, yes. Mm. I will add Kononos to the screen. Good. Oh boy. He'll take a moment and I will. He is too small. He's, yeah. he's rather little. I was I feel expecting like he probably him to be bigger. Would not be... There we go. So, there he is. Balaste, Kononos. Uh. You're, <laughs> you're up here. Whoop. And he turns the corner and takes you over now. Sure. Let me just double check his movement. Uh, oh, okay. One moment. He moves pretty damn quick. I'm just, oops, just double checking that he can make this. 50, it's easy. Yeah, you got me. Yep, easy. Cool. Um, he has just grabbed him and run. He comes on through. Valiste. Uh that is all he can do in this turn right now, or I'm allowing it to do. It Good is up. Felix's turn. Right. Uh so we can see him over there, right? Yes. Well, I'd imagine, well, yeah. You, see him you might be able to with your 18. <laughs> mm. Alright, so I'm gonna I'm gonna move I'm gonna move 30 uh in the direction of where Ballast I went. Uh, mm-hmm. 1, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So about there. Um, and then I'll, uh, I'll <laughs> yell out. I, yeah, I'll Maybe yell out to... 32. <laughs> Roll natural 20, he's got plus 12. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Karanos, we mean you no harm! Uh, and then, uh, as my action, sorry, it's, uh, as my action, uh, I'll sort of put myself on guard. Um, the words escape me. Uh, give me a sec, sorry. Okay, so, as you say, we mean how he's like, why would you defile my realm with your magics? As he sort of yells oh, yeah. over his shoulder. <laughs> Okay, well. Pick his tree, not magic. He's a that nice. was mine. He's made that me. your turn. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Are you trying to do an attack? What's up? No, uh, I'm gonna take the uh, dodge action. Okay, cool. Uh, that means it is now Valiste's turn. I go, um... oh, yeah, you got me. Uh, uh, we did not. Just... <laughs> we uh, we didn't. We did not begin this. Something was something was messing with us, and I wanted to see what it was. I meant no offense nor harm. Uh, we are on a mission from the old man of the forest. Uh, the beings we that's met enough of your that's like 12 seconds of speech yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh that'll be your entire turn so far I'm and speaking. we'll skip to dominic sure because it's just it's too much to fit in one uh yeah one yeah round. yeah yeah i mean he hasn't um i'm not even struggling i'm like yep nah just held limply by the face running along. Oh, uh, by the face. Jesus. Probably like around your head with a massive okay. hand. 
Uh, Dominic, your turn. We're uh, those, those magics were used in uh, in defense. Uh, 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 y- your boys came at us at us first. Um, and, and can I can I try to make a uh, like a persuasion check to? Uh, um, sure. Uh, I mean that is and, functionally like, what I was doing. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm not letting. I only reason I let you do it, uh, Val, is because you're literally the one who cast it. You became his prey. So oh, let's sure. see okay. how the other ones go. We're we're not looking to defile anything here. We're just looking for you. It's a twenty-eight on my persuasion. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Just just writing something down. All right. Cool. Uh, would you like to do anything else with your turn? Um, yeah, I mean, I have my bow in hand, but I, I'm not drawing an arrow yet. Uh, I, yeah, no, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do anything else. I'm not even gonna take the dodge action. Okay. Live on the edge. Tig, your turn. <laughs> Live on the edge. Jesus. Uh... This guy's the Lord of the Hunt, right? He is. Okay. Dom, take Hunt. I'll have yes. <laughs> uh, not yet, not yet, Tig. Heal. <laughs> <laughs> but, t- uh, Tig's gonna full on run. Oh, I can reach him in one move. Okay, then I will <laughs> run. run. All the way big, up to big it. hug. Yeah. Move around the terrain, not straight through that tree. Yeah, I was just trying to measure it. So there if I could move to the side of this tree and then attempt to pretty much jump on and grapple Ballastay, I would like to do that with my full movement. Go for it. Uh <laughs> tell you what. I know what you're trying to do. Yep, yeah. so big hug. you're trying to attack. grab Ballastay and like knock it out of his hands? Yeah. On a scale like, of one to having my head torn a off. Pit bull, it's a lot. Like, here's the um, thing, the pit bull's trying to go like this and take it. Okay, That's I ten. want you to make a athletics check. <gasps> okay. I think this is the first time I've ever been killed in the first Ooh. session. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be opposed athletics. I feel like I'm going to lose here, but... Oh, shit! You did it! Oh, I did it! So yeah. He got a 20 total with his plus 50. Oh my god. <laughs> so he's running and he's about to slam Valestay into a tree, right? And then oh. you just come along and grab him and tumble to the ground. And he skids, slams on the first of the tree and draws back on a spear aiming down at both of you. I wish you reached up my claw just like... Are you in front of Valestay shielding him or is yes. you behind Valestay? Okay, so like, you're in the line of fire. Me. telling me. Yes, so, I am. Uh, Right, so on purpose. <laughs> Kernanos will make two spear attacks against you. Now okay. you do have your bonus action before I move. Would you like to rage, or are you not raging? Oh yeah, I'm raging. Okay, cool. Just because obviously it makes a change if you're going to yeah. be getting hit. Yeah. All right, one attack. Twenty-nine to hit. Should should hit. Yeah. Yep. Probably. And the second spear, twenty-four to hit. Does that hit you? Yep. Cool. All right. So from the first attack, you take 21 slashing. Yep. And 32 radiant. Okay. From the second uh, attack... I need a calculator. Hang on. Is that halved? Or <laughs> yes, it's halved already? because I'm raging. Yeah. yeah. No, that was so do you, want me to, do you want me to just give you all of the numbers and halve it? Yes, please. Okay. Let me bring my calculator up. <laughs> ah, the math part of the evening. Mm. Yes, yes. It's just, it's just, it's too many, too many numbers to quickly mental math. So yeah, plus 32, I've, I've got a big number plus 15, with. plus 34, and it doesn't make any difference to you because it's... Oh my God. So you take 51 points of damage after it's been halved. Oof, okay. So he Damn. steps in, and he slams it down on your chest, and you feel the bar crack over your heart. And then he sort of flicks it up, and throwing you aside, and as you go through the air, he whirls it around his head and bats you aside with the, uh, the blade. And you okay. just go tumbling away. I won't. I won't move you. But that's effectively yep. what's what's happened. He will then okay. stand above you and be like, "Are you the only one of these weaklings willing to fight back?" No. 
Okay. okay. Felix, it's your turn. Okay. All right. You, you've done it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to run up behind him. As I'm running up, uh, I hold my rapier up and I'm like, Storm's Caress, ignite! And uh, active, use a bonus action to activate the, the rapier, which will shoot lightning as it down down the uh, down the rapier, uh, and then I'm gonna uh, attack him with my rapier. Go for it. Make your Juan attack, uh, um, which I also get sneak attack damage because he's yep. Uh, well, if it hits. <laughs> nope, that's the wrong button. Is that the right button? That's the right, right button. button. Yep, there we go. We'll uh, hit. Cool. Good. So get all that sneak attack damage in there. Yep, so here's the sneak attack damage. And then okay. here's the weapon damage. No, weapon damage is already in there. Oh, uh, no. Hold on. Fuck. You should have saved that one because that was a crit. But no. Yep. Uh, no, that's fine. Uh, 13 plus 5 plus 24. No, 13 plus 6 plus 24. Yep. Yeah. So that's 30, 43 points of damage. And I believe, unfortunately, that he has some resistances. So. Yep. Yeah. Uh, El Supreme. He takes. How much piercing did you do? Uh, 37 halves. Yep. Is what, 16, 17? 18. I'll go with 18. It is 18. Eight, yeah. I'm glad I'm bad at math. Uh, he takes 18 points of damage, and the lightning from your blade gets sucked into him, and as he turns to look at you, his eyes are just dancing with lightning as he's absorbed it. Oh, dope! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, bad, bad. <laughs> no. Uh, no. Bad damage. You done good. <laughs> Ballastay, it's your turn, buddy. Um, I say. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're, we're, my, we're smiting the demigod. Good. I cast Green Flame Blade. Um, and. Uh, <laughs> uh, might and then I uh, yeah I'm gonna as part of that spell attack I attack him with Void's Call. Go for it. Um, sure. Yeah, maybe. Let's find out. Twenty. Let's see. Look at his AC. Oh, it hits. Very nice. Twenty-two hits. Excellent. It's good to know, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Uh, Slashing, 15 slashing, and then a pair of, well, hell no, I'm, I'm, it's, it's 3d8 plus my yeah, ability. That should all be included. I'll fix that for next stream, but yeah, that should be included when you click it. That's right. I will um, just, shall I roll it now? Yeah, 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 roll it, roll it now. Oh, two right ones now. and a seven, fuck off. <laughs> so is that nine necrotic? Uh, I believe it is fire. Fire, oh, that's from your. That's okay, the yeah. green flame blade. Okay, so 15 plus 9. Um, and then yeah, it's 15 plus 9. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else. Cool. So, uh, as you sort of swing back your staff the, uh, and cast Green Flame Blade, this uh, big scythe blade comes out of it, just ignites the shadowy energy, and you swing through. It just sort of passes through one side of him and out the other, and he roars into the sky before looking down at you, just angry. But he eyes the weapon, and there's this like slight tilt of the head as he like recognizes. I, Where can did I, can you I, get that? It is a gift for the Raven Queen, not you. Okay. Uh, anything else you'd like to do? <laughs> um, I would like to, as a bonus action, uh, give Bardic Inspiration to, uh, who's next? <laughs> uh, probably Dominic. Fuck it. Yeah. Dom can have Bardic Inspiration. Right. As you do that, um... Because I believe you're like a storyteller. You don't actually have to like do anything for your like inspiration. You just do. Do you say anything? Do you want to do add any flavor to that? Uh, yeah, um, I can say. Oh, 
I could have used it myself uh, to do 8d6 extra psychic damage, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> uh, I say to him, Dominic, uh, this chap doesn't seem to want to be mates. Uh, maybe we can convince him? Uh, as, he, as you say that, he looks at you, and this wave of lightning just bursts out of him. Good I up. need everyone Good to up. make dexterity saves that is within 10 foot of him. Uh, uh, well, it's all of us, except uh, Dominic. Uh, yeah, dex save. Oh, no. <sighs> I choose to go with that. I'm okay with that. Oh, 23. Oh. That's fucking bullshit. Okay. Uh. <laughs> you all take 34 points. Of damage. I mean, uh, well, if a twenty-three ain't saving, fuck it. Um, <laughs> twenty-three ain't saving. That's how much? So how much damage? Uh, thirty-four. Hold on, I have an ability that I can use. Uh, where is it? It is. Uh, uncanny dodge. Yes, uncanny dodge. That's the one I'm after. Uh. <laughs> I can use my reaction to halve the attack, uh, halve, halve the damage. And you take 17 points of damage. Cool. As you sort of like hold the blade up in front of you as most of the lightning earths into the blade and gets absorbed back into that magic, but you still get like this horrible shocking sensation up your arm, the muscle in your neck stiffen and like your, your ears ring as this lightning pounds through your brain. Yeah. Not good. Right. So, Dominic. Dominic. Um, for my reference, and for the reference of perhaps the audience, uh, but it's also for mine, because I don't know what it does. What does this Bardic Inspiration give me? Uh, it adds... Uh, hang on. Um, is it to my attack roll, to my damage, to my... Bardic Inspiration is a bonus action. Uh, 1d12 to any attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. You could have used it just then. <laughs> I didn't need to. I wasn't in range. Oh, you didn't need to. Fucker. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Lucky you. So, uh, yeah. As as um, the squishy eyes. As my unrelated bonus action, I'm going to uh, uh, you know pull this, grab my bow out, and just pull a string of light between the two ends of it, uh, and say, uh, "All right, Athena, guide my shots," and uh, cast Hunter's Mark using the glove on him, so I can track the hunter, and then I'm going to let loose three arrows. He doesn't okay. like spells. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Most of them will miss. <laughs> the last one you does could, hit, though. You could add uh, your bardic inspiration to one of the other two. You could. You could. Uh, you only. Uh, need... I don't. I don't think it's gonna hurt. <laughs> You've got boosters and stuff as well. You can stack these things up. Yeah, that's true. All right. Well, let's add uh, to the second shot. Let's add a uh, one d twelve. Twenty four. There we go. There you go. Yeah, that'll the do. 22 hit before. Let's yep, use that. Tickets. There you go. Thought of inspiration. 26 and 30. Nice. Nice. That's for you to open hits. 26 and 30. Uh, so that goes 56, half to 28. Cool. Right. So. Uh, right. That makes it. Tig's turn, but wait, watch one second. Hopefully, this doesn't work. I'm trying to make my screen bigger again. There we go. Um, sorry, there's there's new new Zoom update changed some things, and I couldn't figure out the button. But yeah, continue, <laughs> Tig. It is your turn. Great. Okay. Uh, Tig play. <laughs> uh, okay. We were specifically instructed not to allow this to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use my nat twenty to hit the shit out of this guy. Good. Good. Alright, alright, alright. Uh, so that's one automatic hit. Roll your other attack, and because it's an at yep. 20, you automatically get your third attack as a... Uh, if, because you're a great weapon master. Yeah. So you get two more attacks. Roll them up. The 14 will miss. The 19 will... Oh, you're raging. Shit. 23 and 31 hit. Yeah. And just like punch him <laughs> twice. Just like... I am Tree Friend! Stop! Oh, I am Tig! Okay, uh, cool. 
So, Big play. And let me let me look at this. So you have uh, that's twelve plus twenty is your standard attack with Great Open Master, I believe. And then you double that because that's how this works. So that goes from thirty-two to sixty-four. Mm-hmm. And then you add twenty-three plus four plus four plus eighteen. I didn't add your rage damage before, so that's a further eight. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and all that's your damage uh, counts as magical enough. because that's what arm um, does to you. He gives yeah. you a tree in his arm, so it's gonna ignore his freaking resistances. Um Cool. I mean, let me let me just more than we've all done all day. She <laughs> is she is that's a the whole very one dimensional character, it. right? Yeah. She just she smashes stuff good. That she it. is uncomplicated. Mm. Uncluttered. Yeah. <laughs> uh, holy crap. Okay, <laughs> that is hundred and twenty one points of damage. Fucking love it. Uh, Three more yeah. of them, please, Dick. <laughs> wow. Right. It is Colonel Horse's <laughs> turn. And you punch him once and you, you feel under your fist a rib break and you watch as the skin along his chest bulges out as it presses against his skin. And you punch that same spot a couple times, he winces back and he's you you've uh, got his attention. So, I just screamed at him like, "I am Tig. I am Tree Friend." He is gonna sit there and attack you twice. Once, twice. Mm-hmm. <gasps> the second one was a crit. All right, three times. <laughs> can, uh, can I do anything to figure out? No. <laughs> Shit. Twenty-six. I just spent plus forty. Plus, and then the second one. Oh my god, that's a lot of damage. I'm invincible. Plus You're a loony. Uh, Hits you for 157 points of damage. That's okay. And then it uh, halves to 78. Uh, yeah. Good. Uh, good. Wow. Yowza. Uh, 74, <laughs> you said? Don't worry, I have healing word. 78, <laughs> 78 points of damage you take. Got it. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, it is Felix's turn. He's just like, he sits there and like winces and he raises it up and he just watches this like ribs like cuts along the inside of his uh, chest and it like quickly bruises out. He stabs down at you once, just driving you into the ground and stabs down at you again. And twice your thick wooden hide just, just repels the spear, not quite managing to get that uh kill shot in um yeah it's a uh, felix's turn all right so seeing as he absorbed my lightning damage yeah. um uh, that's what i assume happened mm-hmm. uh bonus action to to flick off the lightning damage on my on my rapier yep uh and i'm gonna take another attack with him just as a normal rapier attack uh, but use green flame blade instead as a okay. action. Good green call. flame bros. All right. Go for it. 22 hits. Cool. Uh, and I'll roll the green flame. And you also get your uh, sneak attack because he is flamed. Yep. Uh, I'd also like to add my 1d6 booster on the damage as well. Sure. Go for it. It's a cool. uh, that's fun. just... Uh, bear with me. 46 plus it goes to 51 half to 25. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's still not bad. So you sit there and you jab this sword into him and you just like twist it and yeah. the flame starts licking up and burning away at his fur. He sort of sighs warily. Balaste, it is your turn. Um... Yeah. Uh, well, he didn't like the sword. I'll do it again. Um, I, can I roll an insight to determine whether or not 
reasoning with this guy is gonna work. <laughs> uh, yeah, the time yeah. for reasoning is best. Well, that's my concern, uh, <laughs> and I would like to ascertain whether or not I might be right in this. Uh, that's a na oh, fucking crit. Oh, <laughs> he okay. can be reasoned with. He, you guys said a few things, done a few things that made him like teeter on the edge of it. Is the fact that he is the god of the hunt. This is his nature. Uh, he has to test himself against opponents, and sure. you're proving strong. He's pretty sure he knows the outcome of this fight, but it, again, it's in his nature. So right. If you want to try reasoning with him, you can try. Um, with that crit, can I know? Would I get anything about what reasoning with him might entail? Whether or not submitting is probably not the way to go. I'm probably wanting to prove myself a worthy adversary. That is my logic, but that's Josh's logic. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I can give you here, unfortunately. I'm just thinking. No, you you know that, yeah, cowing to him might help, but it's definitely depends on the way you go about it. Um, he is a very prideful, arrogant thing that hates magic, and the fact that you guys keep casting spells is not in your favor. <laughs> Yeah, no. Um, I considered casting a spell and thought, well, that's probably not such a grand idea. Um, I like... Uh... Can I... Uh, I, I say... Oh, can I, I just need to sort of... Um, need to think of a quick way of phrasing it. <laughs> um, you want me to skip your turn and come back to you? Uh, yeah, please do. Okay. So... Dominic, it'll become your turn. Um, seeing that we're still within combat with him, then um, Dominic is just going to take in a deep breath and say, you know, fly straight with the wind. Uh, and I'm going to action surge and fire six arrows. All right, go for it. It's a hit, a hit, a hit. Oh, Jesus. A hit, nice. a miss. I think I'll use a booster or something on that one that I miss. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Roll, roll your booster, otherwise it'll hit. They all hit. Oh no, it's a lot of hits. One, oh two. my god. Uh, tell you what, buddy, you just you just roll your dice, add it up for me. Tell me what happens. Oh, shit. Oh, that's a lot. I've got a calculator here if you want. Uh, oh, I got, I got one too. It's okay. That's uh, uh, that's many, many hits. Plus ten, plus oh, fourteen, no. plus fifteen, plus three, plus ten, plus six, plus thirteen, eighty-nine. Somewhere in the nice. Math genius. Pew, 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 pew. Oh, 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 oh. Not u not using my sharpshooter, so like I'm I'm kind of holding back really? on wanting to hurt him. Mm. Um, no scopes. How much did you say it was? <laughs> eighty-nine. Eighty-nine. So. So I think that these like are that. very um. They're very precisely fired shots. Like I'm, I'm not going for like organs and stuff, but it's the thought of like trying to pin him against a tree, you know, like the outline of arrow sort of thing. Um, so as in, <laughs> the outsides of his arms and trying to, to to keep him locked down more than I'm trying to hurt him. And they all hit along his like joints and biceps. It's not really a tree you can pin him to, but like you, it starts like it stiffens him up, and he just <sighs> at you. Oh. He... If you want to hunt, we can hunt, but it's not what we came here to do, Kurnos. He will. Can I have a spend <laughs> in a minute? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I just wanted to raise. I would. I, I figured out what I want to say. <laughs> As a legendary action, would he is going to point his spear at Tig while turning to face you, uh, Dominic, and he's going to cast Sunbeam on Tig. Ooh. She'll just so, like that arm will love that. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, Arm's oh, gonna love that. Take the rest of Take, fleshy Take, not so much. Not so much. Uh, <laughs> make a DC twenty Constitution save. Ooh, okay. <laughs> no Take, no. Um, DC twenty Constitution. No, oh, this is so not gonna happen. But okay. 
Well, one of them would have. <laughs> one of them would have made it, yeah. yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll choose to take The entire entire glade grows bright as the sun literally shifts across the sky, and then <laughs> this beam of light just burns down on your team with twenty-three radiant damage. I rolled really badly, um, making oh, no, it for you. Tw- Twelve. <laughs> 12 points of damage to you. So, this, she's just like in this beam and it's turned mm-hmm. towards uh, to you, Dominic. And he looks at you, plunges the spear in the ground, and you notice that all the land around you, hills start growing up. All the trees are still like slowly rising up at the ground as he's like creating this area. Uh, it's like like the the whole world is like curving around to where you are, but it is now your turn, Valiste, since you missed it. You are truly mighty, Lord. We apologize for any offense, but you are not our enemy. We here to hunt another. Back persuasion. Away. Yep, make a persuasion check. But he's telling you to back away. Very well. Persuasion. There it is. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, okay. But yes, he's asked you to back away as he uh, takes his bow off his shoulder and loads an arrow while looking at Dominic. Oh no. You oh no. want to hunt, boy! <laughs> um, uh, Tig, he's also asked, he's asked everyone to back away. Will you listen to this? Lord of the Forest. Can I, yes. can I say, Tig, back, back do as right the nice here. Lord of the Forest says. I'm going to back away here towards this tree here. Yep. And as you back away, all the flowers on your arm are like shaking a bit and they're like growing a little bit bigger because the sunlight did help us. Um, yeah. Not that your mortal body is enjoying it much. Nah, it's fine. All right. Kononos will fire one arrow at you, Dominic. Just to prove a point. The point being that he's established dominance. Yeah. He's a bit of a dick. Twenty-two to hit. I'm gonna use a luck point. You can roll that. <laughs> Alright. I don't like Twenty seven to hit. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Right, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Um, <laughs> you die. I'll take so I might I take <laughs> Dominic is squishy. <laughs> 41 points of damage from his first shot. Oh, push okay. Sure. Ooh. Run. I will hunt you down. So don't run. He wants, if you want to, you can roll an insight to what he's trying to like ask of you here. Yeah. With my minus one to insight? Yeah, let's... Uh, still I got a 27. Well <laughs> nice. Dom doesn't get it. Josh or, or, or Val does. He wants to have a hunting contest in this area. Uh, one v one, contest. effectively, where you're trying to kill each other. Dominic versus Kononos. Uh, and can, can I, from that, infer that if he wins, Dominic dies? <laughs> Who knows these things? Well, Kernanos, and maybe you. Uh, <laughs> Look, it's it's not going to be great. <clears throat> if, if he wins. Yeah, oh, he, he okay. could be bad. Um, I win this. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can, however, raise you. <laughs> Uh, like but he's not going to like either. it if I do it because that's a spell. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to say anything as a free action before this like turn ends? Uh, me yes. or anybody so, else? Since uh, you I, got the insight, I, um, I would say, uh, "What will you be hunting, Lord?" He and I will hunt each other. That seems a rather unfair contest. You are clearly the mightier hunter. Hey. I mean, Dom, are you going to disagree with me? (laughs) (laughs) 
He turns to you. Stay out of this mortal. You cause this. Then Dominic. Do you accept? Oh. Can can I incite what would be the wiser thing to uh, to say yes or no? The wiser thing is to accept. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I nod. Turn to <laughs> Dom at my shoulder just We all we're all just standing there behind Kernanos going Like I I I mean I'm also I'm lawful, so I would think that like this is this is like like an honorable duel sort of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. in that same sort of sense. So like if that's what uh what it's gonna take. He waves a hand behind him and all the trees and bushes just wrap themselves around Tig, Val, and Felix. I'm insulted that he thought we might involve ourselves and also I don't need to move. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to make a concert. I totally wasn't going to help out or anything. The, um, a lot the of effect spells only have is, vocal components. <laughs> the effect here is... Uh, he in the Feywild, you can uh, force your will on the environment, and he has done that. That is why the hills rose up. That is why the plants are obeying what he wants. With enough force of of soul, I guess, because that's how the phase works. You can get things to do as you wish. You need to be very, very strong-willed, though extremely in his case so as dom and the horned god face off bows drawn and draw back on their bows we will end the session there <laughs> and pick up next oh, one no. <laughs> ah, i'll die in the second episode then there there you go. Go. <laughs>